Salutations and welcome to the Mana Bar Video Game Podcast. I'm your host, Andy Rose, and I'm joined here with Matt Samarco. Hey, it's August 22nd, Thursday. Aw, he remembered. Indian party. hey What date is it, Dan? Uh, Thursday. All right, I'm just going to make up a date every time. Just kind of counteract. Off of me. I did. <laughs> he did. I, I did. He didn't I, remember the date. I couldn't think anything unique. How Very you guys sorry. doing? Pretty good. How you doing? Not too shabby. I'm doing really well. Is Glad that, to hear it. Is that because you're wearing the podcast shirt again? No, I just ran out of things to wear. Oh. Now I'm yeah. excited. I'm uh, redoing my kind of gaming space. So that's like a that's a pretty big deal for me. What does that mean? All right, so you told me you were giving me all that stuff. Oh no, you lied to me now. Every time That's... I ask you if you want anything, <laughs> you look through my things and say like, "Ooh, ooh, ooh, no." <laughs> that is true. And then there are things that I did like sell to you, and I have since bought back. <laughs> Pretty much, <laughs> because now I'm I'm at a state in life where I have enough money where I don't need to sell games to make ends meet, so I can buy back those games from you. That is very true. Such yeah. as Super Smash Melee or the original Super Smash Brothers or whatever the hell else I said. I feel uh, like it's, it's just you. exclusive to the Super Smash games. That's it. No, <laughs> I sold you a uh, Tales of Symphonia. Yeah, but you haven't bought that back. So those those aren't part of the buyback program. I think you said you would trade Phantom Hourglass back to me. But we didn't end up doing that. I didn't even know that was yours. Yeah. Neato. I gave you that. I didn't save the box, though, so you're probably pretty pissed at me. Uh, So anyways, uh, yeah, I'm redoing my gamer space. So right now... I still don't know what that means. All right. I'm explaining. I'm explaining. It's in your apartment. So (laughs) I don't know what it does. The only space I have to myself really is my room. The living room is Matt's kind of gaming area. Aside from his room, I only have my room. That's my entertainment, my dining room, my gaming area, and my sleeping apparatus area. So I had these two really old bookshelves on the opposite side of my TV. And, you know, I, it's not like my room's a mile long, so it's not a big deal. But when you have to get up and uh, instead of just worst. turning around and seeing your games there and have to go across the room, grab a box bring it over maybe leave the disc out for a couple days like it's it's all a thing so i got rid of those bookshelves i moved the ones from one side of the room to the other that have all of my comic books and my transformers on them and i bought this new kind of three column shelf thing i'm going to put up it's going to be right next to my entertainment center everything's going to be very accessible i'm going to put the amiibos in my uh my overwatch pop figures on top of it anything game related is going to be on it it's going to be right there right next to the systems i'm not going to have to move 20 feet or wherever i have to go to get my games it is it is a hassle i know those these first world problems whew, sound like it says really the guy struggling. has a basement dedicated to his video games an entirety of a basement two couches and two separate entertainment systems for his games i thought we weren't going to bring that into it that i helped him set up he did he did and i unfortunately had to take some of it apart because uh, i got new furniture matt what are you playing this week Okay, um, nothing, really. That's not true. Um, <laughs> that is not That's true. That's not entirely true. I That's was... <laughs> very false. I've yeah. seen it. So I was gone this weekend, so I didn't get to play as much as I typically play. Um, I'm still chugging along with Legend of Dragoon, and that game's so good, and I just want to keep playing it. Um, I kind of have a deadline to finish it by the end of this weekend, which is going to be rough, considering I'm only on disc two of a four-disc <laughs> game. Yeah. Send the bar a little high there, Matt. I am. I'm going to... I'm. I'm I, I can't say I'm going to do it. I'm going to try to do it. Now, hang on. Is this like Final Fantasy VII where the final disc is really just like that last kind of fight of Honestly, the game? I'm not sure because I haven't played it through all the way. Because you know, you know when you play games that you like and you'll just end up playing the first seven hours like every time? I've probably only beaten that game like twice in my life. So this is the first time I'm like, all right, I'm definitely going to beat this again in like a, at least 10 years. So I don't remember exactly how long everything is. I did look up on how long to beat.com how long this game is and it was like roughly 40 hours i'm like 16 hours in yeah. so that's gonna be rough to do if that's true i'm hoping because i've played it before and know what i'm doing i can beat it a little quicker than that but i guess we'll no that out. that's actually entirely true there are there are a lot of games where it's like i'll have this like random nostalgia factor to go back and play but i'll only do it for a limited amount of time yeah it's like, I, I already beat this game i just want to get that feeling back i think that's what the like this whole like re-releasing consoles in mini format, I think that's been their whole spiel is just feel it for a moment. Yeah, and yeah. This, you get in this like unfortunate area where I am, where like a lot of times you'll play these first. Like, you're like, I don't want to play the first four hours. I want to 
<laughs> skip to the next part, but you can't. Like oh, Final Fantasy X. The amount of times I played like Resident Evil 4, the first five hours of that game, and I've actually been watching on Giant Bomb. They've been like as a group, um, one of the people on that team has been doing like the whole game, and it's like four times longer than I even remember because there's so much stuff that I haven't done or seen since like the first year it was out when I actually beat it all the way through. Um, now, is Legend of the Gr- uh, Legend, Legend of, of the Dragoon. Dragoon. Legend not to of be Dragoon. confused with Legend, the Legend of, of Dragoon. Dragon or anything like that. That's what I actually yeah, I used to think the game was called. Is it available on any other platform? Or Because I know you're playing the original PS1 version on your PS2 hooked up to your HDMI TV. Correct. Is it available on any other medium? I believe it's available on PS3 if you like on, on the uh, PS3 store, the PS3 classics, so that you can play it there. But you can't play it on PS4. They haven't downloaded it on. It's not on Steam. It's not on the PC or anything. So yeah. it's kind of so hard to get So you're pretty much playing of. the only way you're available. I just thought it was interesting that you were playing the original version, which I, by the way, commend. Yeah, you playing the original version. I think that's There's, really yeah, cool. It's, but it's also the only it's way like an updated you can. Way to play um, it. It's kind of the same way for a lot of um, a lot of people who want to play specifically. I've probably brought this up before. PS3 games. You you can only play them on the PS4 streaming. Yeah, yeah. Service, but you can't actually download the physical game. Yeah, I, it's I've kind been... of obnoxious. Like you have to either have PS Now or like a PS3, so you yeah. can play the PS3, the PS1 classic games. It's kind of a how did Legend of the Dragoon not Legend make? Of Dragoon. <laughs> if you keep adding a the, there's no the. There's, there's no, no the. the. All right, mental note: no the. How it's did like Legend of the Dragoon <laughs> not make the PlayStation? <laughs> <just said> <laughs> Sorry, what? Okay. Said, no, I didn't say it that time. You said the Dragoon. I said okay, how did Legend of Dragoon oh, okay. not make it to the PS Classic? Um, I, I don't know. That More was like cult. That was one of the like two or three games where I was like, "God dang it! Why isn't that on there?" Like, I, I know mean, Parasite Eve made it on the Japanese one, but not the English oh, one. Oh, that's and right. And then Legend of Dragoon yeah. just didn't make it for some godforsaken reason. Which is, it's kind of you bring up a good point because it's like a Sony property, so they yeah. didn't. There was no like, oh, we have to contact this company. They, I'm, I'm assuming it wouldn't have been ter- terribly hard for them to put it on there, but I guess they just don't like us. Yeah, because um, the only other instance. I haven't actually talked to a lot of people about that game. I only got, like, I never owned it. I borrowed it from a friend in high school. Um, so I didn't really, like, ever own it or really get to play all the way through it. But Dan played it in college, I remember. Yeah, it got uh, great reviews. Sophomore actually, year. It sold pretty well. But, and they, they had a sequel in development for, like, some amount of months in, like, pre-production. And then they eventually canceled it for some awful, horrible reason. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, Who's yes. the developer? Do you know? Um, I don't know exactly. I think it was all like Sony. So oh, just like they, kind of a Sony Interactive yeah, Entertainment yeah. or whatever they were back then. Yeah. Oh. I'm actually having hmm. so much fun that I I went on a spending eBay spending spree and I bought a bunch of old like similar type, hopefully similar type games. I bought Chrono Cross, um, Legend of Gaia. Um, did you get Xeno Gear? I did not get Xeno no. Gear. I got um, uh, two others that I can't remember right now, but. Yeah, I'm gonna try to play Vagrant Story and Tales of Symphonia. Oh, you did get yes. So I got okay. all those. So those are the three I, I have games on a game. Owned game. and played, and as previously mentioned, sold to Dan. Tales of Symphonia. Yeah, it's a good game. Yeah, I liked it. I'm excited I liked to, it a lot. When I get time, I'm excited. When I have a little downtime, when there's nothing coming out, so who knows when that's gonna <laughs> um, be to play through those. We're about to get into some major uh, game releases, so that's gonna be a while. Mm-hmm. Did Legend of Dragoon come out in 2000? That seems that's that's that right. That's, was it, it at, came like, out the, the tail end? It was yeah, because I, I was just looking up the reviews for it, and it, it said was... the release date was June 11, 2000. Is I was that, like, the user score looks a lot bigger than the. Yeah, uh, so I, I, I'm checking the the review scores of uh, Legend of Dragoon, uh, and the user the critic score is not bad. It's got a 74 on the Metacritic, but um, a lot of users have it up. At, to Dan's uh, credit, he's very good at looking up important information of what we're talking about while we're talking about it yeah so. i'm not saying that sarcastically either i know you have a an issue with telling when i'm being sarcastic <laughs> I, I i i do no, you, I, you I, actually like look up like no i know important things while we're doing the podcast. well i was actually just curious when he said it was kind reviewed pretty checker. well but i knew i knew that it was uh that user scores would be very very high because it was especially for the time um it was it's a very fun turn base like that that's why i like it it had that you have to tap the button. So yeah. it was engaging. It wasn't just, um, you, you know, Final, well, Final Fantasy VII still had that magical, something about it. It was just really, really good, well, regardless I mean, of it being Final Fantasy VII, I feel like, set the bar. Exactly. But there's, there's something like Pokemon, you know, uh, you know I was playing uh, some of the uh, Pokemon, um, 
What? Oh God. Uh, hey, let's go Pikachu. I'm sorry. That that's the title. Oh of my it. God, the one from N64. No, the, the actual oh, one Switch. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. when I when I got the new Switch that I did. When you it, said that, I thought of the one from N64 with the microphone that you were talking <laughs> to to tell Pikachu to do yes, things. Yes, that's randomly what I hooked up this week. No. Um, unfortunately, that was the one game that when I transferred my stuff did not transfer. So I was like, damn it. So I had to like kind of start that over again. Uh, we can talk about that um, a little later. Yeah. Your but um, Is there anything else you've been playing, Matt, besides Legend of the Dragoon? That's most of it. I've still been playing Picross like almost every night before I go to bed. I usually oh, throw nice. in like one or two games of that. I've um, started doing that again. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing so. It, they come out with a new, basically a new season every year that they've launched. So they're on season three, and it has this one has a new colors mode, yeah. which is like a nice. It's like a nice refreshing twist on the game where you know you have to to anyone that's played the game you have to match based on this grid some lines and a certain you have certain numbers I and mean, it's hard to explain but the numbers definitely the colors add something to it because um each code has to belong to a certain color so you have to do so it in a specific it just order. To, just to explain the game well, there's question. there's numbers on each so you have a grid and there's numbers on each it's edge like, of the sort grid of like, like sudoku but not it's it's kind of like sudoku so like you that. have numbers on the top edge and the left edge and those correspond to how many dots in the grid are on that row or column and you have to kind of match match up and figure out which squares have yeah. a dot in it and which ones don't in order to make a pixel art picture in the end it's be one of my favorite games um i i forget his name i think it was pear schneider from ign is the one who turned me on to the game by talking about it so much because i crave puzzle games i actually mm. um also got reintroduced to it over the weekend so and then when matt says seasons it, it's almost like it's a completely new game, even though it's kind of just more of the same puzzles. Like, yeah. they, they release them as separate games. And they're only, like, eight or nine bucks, so it's not like... Oh, bank, yeah, it's bucks. not going to break the bank. It's, a, it's for what you... I, I feel like it's a very justifiable price for the amount of puzzles you get in the game, yeah. too. It's, like, many hours worth of playing yeah. just from, like, one of those packs, so... It sounds like a visual, like, Minesweeper. It's a fun... Th like, I specifically... It's a lot like Minesweeper. Yeah, where it's, yeah. like, hey, there's... Mentality. Yeah, well, when you said, like, this row has X amount of yeah. pictures in it, kind of like Minesweeper was, like, oh, there's X amount of bombs within this cube or something like that but like so. most of the time what i do is i'll play it like right before i'm going to bed it, like each map is like 10 minutes 5 to 15 minutes so yeah. i'll just play like one or two maps and then you know set it down it's just kind of like it's not very intensive you don't have to you know be twitchy with your fingers there's no real action so yeah it's just kind although of like a, the uh, puzzles go a lot quicker for my girlfriend because she plays basically with like the cheating oh, all the hints. yeah you're all supposed, the hints you gotta on. turn off all the hints and stuff like all the because it'll give you like i've never even used them but it'll make it easier for you yeah. if you let all these little hints but that yeah. kind of takes can, away can the we all call out her that she's cheating yeah, she Cheater. Sounds like not doing it right she sounds like an awful Cheater. person yeah but um no i love picross i definitely want to i can't wait for season three i you know i'm already doing the one with all the numbers i can't wait till they add uh colors into the mix i think that's yeah, gonna be very exciting also that's... minesweeper to me at age five was just click until you win yes. do the four corners doesn't where yeah the four, the four cor corners yes exactly yes, four corners. Yes. yes i did the four corners to start and then i would just kind of click until large amounts <laughs> of the map disappeared and just kind of hoped for the best i don't even remember how old i was until i realized you know what those numbers how to something. actually play minesweeper i get like a five i'm like ooh, i haven't seen many of them <laughs> they click next to it oh boom all right i did i used to think that was my score <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't it was trouble ahead um dan what have you been doing uh so this weekend aside um, from baseball uh, yeah i know i've been hooked on that damn baseball game i gotta stop playing that that's anyway. right you'll have your revenge soon <sighs> No, well, I'm just hoping the next multiplayer will, like the Call of Duty, I need that to come out soon. But, um, so this, I, I was on the road for the weekend, uh, going to New York, so I took my Switch, um, and randomly just popped on, uh, oh, no, I have one of the Sega, there's like a Sega, like, Genesis pack Ooh. game for the Switch. It's like a... It's like a almost kind of like the um, the the Sega that's coming out, the Sega Mini, and it just has a bunch of games on it. And I was like, ah, you know what? I saw something about Streets of Rage four, and which got a release date. And I was like, you know what? I just want to play Streets of Rage three. I'm just gonna play it and kind of like that's seven minutes. I'm just gonna play seven minutes of it, and like which seven just hours? Just to recap, sure. Seven hours of yeah. an RPG, seven minutes of like a beat 'em up. <laughs> that's such a short amount of time. I know, but um. I, I actually beat it. I was surprised. Of course, I kind of cheated in seven because seven minutes. 
No, I didn't beat it in seven minutes. I, I thought I was just going to play it's it like seven that minutes. should be in the record. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, yeah, no. Well, yeah, it should, but it's you can't beat that in seven minutes. But um, the the game has some sort of like fast forward <laughs> and rewind button. How many game genies did you have attached to your <laughs> console that you beat it in seven minutes? Seconds, yeah. <laughs> um, just one punch, everyone. <laughs> um, but sorry, um, go on. yeah, no, I just... I. I forgot how fun that streets of rage 3 was one of the the hmm. fun things they added in that game was the the more points you rack up without dying they added to your your like uh, the, your special um the special was like if you press i don't know if either of you played streets of rage i played uh, two, two a lot but i yeah. don't i'm sure i played three but i don't remember it was it. three basically just more of the same yeah essentially so and then we've played streets of rage three <laughs> except more of the same know, on top of with the, the kangaroo the- with boxing gloves yeah, just oh, it's weird. Did you get a chain whip in two? I might be getting that confused with Road Rage or Road Rash. Road Rash Castlevania. <laughs> no, it's still a fun game. Also True. a psyche game. I'm still in the realm. But um, no, it was just it was just really fun. But it, uh, they had that special ability where the the more you go without dying, the more st- stars you get. Um, there was like an over over like B attack. And I, I don't know who you played as in Streets of Rage 2, but Axel was the, the guy with the white t-shirt and the bandana. His would Dude, have, like, ago, he would have, like, it. an uppercut. But the, the, the more stars you get, the the second tier would be, he'd do, like, a longer, like, initial attack, and then the uppercut. Then the second one is, he would spin for a little bit, and then do the uppercut. So it would Sounds basically, stressful. it will, it would extend, like, the, basically, like, the hitbox. Yeah. So at one point, it, you could do it from like the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen and knock like everyone on their ass. Hmm. Um, but of course, you had to do that without dying. Then once you die, you lose a star, and you know. Um, but no, I went through and beat it again, and I I just forgot how fun that game is. Unfortunately, the last boss has like a little cheat. I, I feel like all those beat 'em up games have a little cheat where you can sit in one location and like jump kick them and just go back to your one same spot and you can beat nice. the final boss in under like 50 seconds. It's kind of nice. funny. I always felt like Streets of Rage was better as a co-op game than a single player experience. Like I don't think I ever played it just by myself. I always had like a companion with me. How is it playing it just by yourself? Oh, I see that's the funny thing. I always grew up playing it by myself. So um, did, it, do you, is there a computer player for number two or is it just you? No, it's just just one. Just one player. Oh. Um, I don't know if it balances depending on how many people you have. It may, it oh, may not. Back but then, I doubt it. Yeah, I doubt it's it too. It's probably just the same thing, just with one more sprite on the screen. Yeah, so, um, but I, I still, like, it was one of those, it was my favorite, like, beat em up. I, I don't even like beat em ups, and I loved Streets of Rage too. Yes. I don't know if it's, it's probably a huge nostalgia factor, though. Yeah, I'm I think sure we were just like, it. we were all the right age when that yeah. game came out, so it's like. One of the first great. Like you know, I was a yes. really That's dumb eight year old. I'm like, I can press A, B, or C. <laughs> Move forward. I got this. I just remember that game. Just seeing it so often, it was like Streets of Rage, not for resale. <laughs> like it was just because that's like the model I have, and I guess that game came with a lot of Sega Genesis. Oh really? Um, oh, so like I always a game. yeah. So I always had it, and it was just like, oh, oh I, I can't wonder, sell um, this game because <laughs> this is not for resale. I wonder how up there that is for um packing games sold i wonder if that's like a separate number because i remember you know we were doing the video game jeopardy and um nintendo's highest selling game ever was wii sports because of the pack and wonder how up there streets of rage is um anything I've, else you were playing this week though um so i ended up uh, playing streets of rage um kind of went back for the heck of it to play um super mario brothers U deluxe whatever the heck it was i just wanted a, a simple you could mario have added game to play. any number of adjectives i, 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 I know any letters and I would have believed you were playing the game um Threw that in and um, didn't get. I, I I wish I brought the Samus Returns one. That's the other one I really. Did wanted. you was you, that on the 3ds? Yeah. Okay. That's I bought that. Like I said, I bought that last yeah, week. But you haven't played it yet. I haven't played it yet. But I've been I've been really craving to play. Like ah, oh, I really want to play something in 3D. Um. So I, I want to get into that. Um. Even though I'm questioning because I've never beaten a Metroid game. I never. I something about it. I get like two hours in and I'm just like lost. I yeah, don't know Metroid if it's games, like the original ones are kind of games that I feel like I played a lot for the first hour, kind of like, yes. you know, and then I just kind of fall over w- yeah. with the exception of the prime trilogy, which was kind of a completely different game. But it's, yeah. it's hard to stick with those. I feel like, at yeah, least, I'm at least going back to. Well, them. that's why I'm super excited yeah. for the first person ones with like eventually when it's on a system with two joysticks. Yeah. I feel like that will be a really fun game to play. I'm particularly excited for, um, you know, I've had it in my room over there for god i don't know how long i 
probably a year and a half now, the SNES Mini. It has Super Metroid, which I've never played. It's I've heard it's not only people's favorite Metroid, but it's their favorite game ever. So it, I'm pretty it, excited. By the way, Dan, yes. I, I know it might not count because it's an older game that you probably already beat, but... Thank you. You yes, beat thank a you. game. I did. I did beat a game. I, I am. I am. What? Two weeks in a I row. Don't. I'm not going to add it. Than me the, and Andy. Yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> the the trade off is I'm not adding it to the list because it was already a game you previously beat. But I feel like you deserve that for actually sticking it through. Okay. With the right. game. Right. Especially one that you planned on only playing for seven minutes when you bought it. That is true. I, I really, I was so, like, oh, I'm going to jump to another game. Well, no. Especially those those games where it's like, oh, I can just play something else. And it's so accessible because literally you just go to the main menu and switch yeah. it. But. Um, so for me this week, I didn't have high aspirations because kind of like Matt, I was away for the weekend. You know, I, I knew I wasn't going to have a lot of time to play anything. I wasn't going to be able to, you know, play any more of a Plague's Tale or, um, you know, I have the PS4 Shadow of the Colossus remake I wanted to try out. But um, so I went on the road and I'm like, all right, I'm going to bring my Switch with me. I'm going to bring my Game Boy Advance SP with me. I'm going to get some Minish Cap in. I'm going to play Octopath Traveler. <laughs> so I'm going to finish Jesus. up. I think you, you beat Octopath. Those were ideas. Oh, no, I'm nowhere near beating Octopath Traveler. But really? um, wow. yeah, I think that's a long haul game. Uh, do sure. you know what I ended up playing 100% this week? Not 100% beat, just 100% of my time. Final Fantasy VII. Nice. <laughs> You've beaten that before. It was Fallout right, so 4, here's, here's Final the thing. Fantasy 7. <laughs> here's the thing. When I turn on my Switch and I have the choice between either opening the compartment, taking out a oh game. Oh, my God. Uh, it's already too much work, but wait, there's more. Putting it in the case, opening up a different case, taking out that game, putting it in my Switch. Or there was Final Fantasy 7 that's just there on my Switch home screen just ready to play. How do you go to work every day? You have to get up. You have to, you know, I've go into the shower. You have to choose what you want to wear. You have to rather get dressed. Than There's a lot off, more options. Rather than paying off all of my debt, I've been investing into teleportation technology. So really? I can relieve that stress. Oh, okay. All right. My, yeah. my plan is to be as fat and lazy as possible. Okay. Well, apparently mission accomplished. Because I just laughed from how, how you set up like, oh, my God, you got to take the cartridge out of the It's a lot. Of, sounds Matt, exhausting. is that a lot of work? That's so much oh, work. Oh, I love you that. That's, like like that's, a... I don't know, something about the physical, like, oh, I'm going to get right, this I'm, game. I'm and... also being sarcastic oh. with me saying, well, I I'm sorry to say, squash again, all those dreams. Know, you can't just... tell when I'm being sarcastic. I but... can't. No, so Final Fantasy VII was there, and I just, you know, it's my favorite game, I think. <laughs> nice, <A> strong <laughs> yes. recommendation. From what percentage are you of that? I don't game, know. I, right. think. <laughs> I I I feel like you know how I always talk with the discussion topics that I took a really deep dive into, like what this means or how it is. I've I've been doing that with Final Fantasy VII, and I just I still don't know. Is it my favorite game? Currently, it is. It still is. It still holds up as my favorite. Do game. you think if if Final Fantasy VII, the new one, comes out, the remake? And it, you still love the story, and you still love the game. Will that confirm that, like, hey, they even remade it, and just the story and everything it's, still grips it's me? And probably going to be one of those things where just because of when it came out and how old I was and how it's traveled with me through time, it's probably just going to end up being there for the rest of my life. It just hit on that right. So he'll always be at ninety nine point eight percent that it'll be his favorite. Ninety nine point seven. <laughs> Person. So, anyways, I've been playing. I was playing Final Fantasy, uh, Final Fantasy VII a lot this week, as well as Picross Two, which I know Matt meant. Did I already talk about this? I don't know if I already talked about this. Matt mentioned it's in seasons. Yes. Each oh, season yeah. is more or less its own game, though. Like, there's still like it's yeah, it's not like you year. buy one and then like oh season two's out. You can pay like a smaller fee. They're like each separate games. So like I have Picross Two. He has Picross Three. I'm waiting until I'm done with every single puzzle in Picross Two to buy Picross Three, though. Yeah. Very demanding on myself about that. But anyways, I played a lot of mostly Final Fantasy VII, a little bit of Picross too. How far and... are you in Final Fantasy VII? So here's the thing. Not as far as you would think. Uh, last <laughs> night, I met Red 13. Now, okay. you would think I'm farther than that because I'm six hours in. And that's because I've been really, really pushing myself to check out every nook and cranny of Ooh, the game that yeah. I might have not checked out or might have skipped over over time. And I actually discovered a couple of nuggets Hmm. that I didn't notice just because I had no reason. So, all right. So remember to get to the part where um, it's you, you, you have to cloud cross dresses in the game and it's you, Eris or Aerith, whatever day of the week it is. And Tifa mm. against this, uh, flat, uh, you know, guy who's trying to like whore out these women. Whoa. 
and um, Don, you know it's Don whatever. Don Corleone or something like that. Oh, and he has his little mansion. All right, and you go through all that, and he he you know expels you out into the sewers. I had never done this before, but I went back to his mansion later on in the game when you right before you climb up the wall to go to mm. um, kind of the Shriner Corp, and I went back into his lair just to check out, and there's nobody there. It's nothing. I went back into that dungeon where you found Tifa, yeah. and there's a guy strapped to the table down there. It was one of his henchmen. I'm talking to him, and I released him. Huh. And he's like, oh, thank you. The, sh- the, the, the Shriner guys came. I didn't know what to do. And then he hears noises. He's like, oh, my God, are they back? Oh, my God, they're back. And he runs away. Huh. I'm just like, that's not something I oh, – like, man. there was no items. It's not like I got, like, a, a – uh, like – level 8 limit break or anything like that or uh, level 4 limit break or uh, like a, a special weapon or anything but that was just like a cool nugget. And the easter I, egg, yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, that guy's the suffering for eternity in every playthrough I've ever played because I have no idea what that yeah, is. Yeah, he's still stuck there. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. That kind of reminds me, maybe I should do that just to get like a gist of everything before the remake so I can go, oh man, I saw this or like I want to double make sure this yeah. is there, see what they did with that. Yeah. It's funny, I, f- I felt like when I played Final Fantasy 7, I felt like I played that for an insane amount of hours and i just looked up on how long to beat.com is that the one that you mentioned yeah um and they have three different things they have like the main hours the main and extra and then like if you want to get everything in the game the main story is only 38 and a half hours that's which is still a long time well even, for a final fantasy but i always some games i mean i did i would say somewhere in the middle between main and some extras yeah. i remember staying up night getting the freaking chocobo, chocobo and yeah jeez. Yeah. um but i just felt like that was like a whole semester I spent with that game. Never mind just that, you know, thirty eight between thirty eight and fifty four hours. Um it was it just felt so long. I, I'm not sure how much of that takes into account the grinding you might have to do at the end of the game to get to level one hundred. True. That is true. Um, but yeah, so I'm and you know, I'm doing the same thing with the Zelda games as I go sorry. I just nobody knows, but Matt's switch is on the table and I just like kinda tapped on it as if it was my own which i apologize for um no i'm doing the same thing with the zelda games and that's one of the unfortunate things about playing skyward sword is like normally in zelda games i like to do all the nooks and crannies but um skyward sword left such a bad taste in my mouth from a (laughs) i just want to be done with this game please make it stop kill me standpoint that i just didn't do every little nook and cranny and i don't know maybe sometime i'll go back but probably not but yeah nope that's good um Bringing us into our next topic, something I haven't played in the past week is Apex Legends. Yep, me neither. Matt, why well, don't you Friday, describe Thursday. to everybody why, uh, aside from the trip we took, why we're not going to be playing it in the future either? They broke Apex Legends. And they didn't even break the game. They just, like, broke my spirit to play the game. So I think we touched on last week. They were they had that event that was kind of, like, grimy. Like, you had, you had to pay us $170 to get every item in the game which or every item in the uh, event especially the the heirloom set that was kind of the big top prize of the thing um so uh over the weekend at some point um respawn like came out with like an apology letter they're like oh we can do better this wasn't the monetization we we know we can get but their solution was kind of like a it was uh, like a slap on the face too it was so first off and their their solution to this was you know these seven dollar loot boxes you have to buy 22 of them before you can get the best w- item in the game they're like okay instead of doing this random loot boxes you can buy them individually but they're 18 dollars each so now there it's it's more than double the price for each of the individual pieces if you want to say oh i just want these two but if you do that then you're not going to get access to the best item so there's really no solution there and then what's worse than that is they um they had like an kind of uh like a post on reddit and they were answering a bunch of questions from people in the audience and they were Kind of getting very, um, I would say, unprofessional testy? and testing. <laughs> yes. Was this a specific person from the development team, or was it like it was an two, account they used? It was, the guy, it, was it was the two. It was two people, and it wasn't like I think one was a community manager and one was like one of the head developers, something like that. I'm not exactly sure what their titles were. Um, but I believe one of the guy that that posted the apology, the letter, he was actually one of the people that was. Uh, posting on Reddit too, correct, as well, yeah. which was surprising. Now, that's when you say apology letter, you mean the one before. This well, like the official, took place. correct? Yeah, because okay. yeah. they they basically posted that on their Twitter and then on Reddit, and then they they were answering people's questions in the um in the comment section of Reddit, and they were kind of um you know there's always some people in the gaming um community that are gonna say like mean things or attack developers kind of like personally and kind of go too far, 
but that's kind of a, I think it's just a loud vocal minority. Um, most people are just like, you know, this is kind of ridiculous to pay 170 bucks. Like you wouldn't pay 170 bucks for a full game, let alone like and know, DLC, a, 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 yeah. a, a diff, an axe that doesn't actually do anything in the game. It's the same as just your regular punch. That and it just looks kind of cool. To Dan's credit, you don't even see while you're playing the game. I know that's something you often point out is that this is a first person shooter Correct. you you don't see that while you're in game you really only see that in the lobby yeah well i think i think for that specific item you do see it in game because um it's like your melee weapon so you might you'll you'll like kind of throw it in your yeah hand. But like the other things like the the yeah, heirloom the and, and stuff, stuff like that yeah. yeah um so the developer was going back and forth with a lot of people he was like oh i remember a time when um you know game players weren't asshats to the developers that were making these games for them and then they were, he was calling people like, oh, you know, most of you are just a bunch of freeloaders who aren't paying for the game. So, you know, we can't make these things cheap because it doesn't it doesn't uh, change how many people buy them or anything like that. And it's just it, it's it seems like it's very dismissive. And, you know, I'm I'm one of the most pro capitalist person you could probably find. Like, I'm like, yeah, make your money, do what you can. But there's there's a point where it is super predatory, especially when you're talking about loot boxes where it's gambling. And then on top of that. $107 to get the one item you want. It's it's not like, okay, how about, you know, each of the seasons you could do for 10 bucks, and then maybe for these mini two-week things, they could be like, all right, here, just throw us five bucks, and you can get a pretty easy access if you play through the game and play, you know, a few matches a day, you'll be able to get everything. Instead, they go, you know, we're going to kind of prey on people that don't have the impulse controls. I'm sure a lot of people that are spending this 170 200 bucks can't afford to spend it, but they just like want to get teenagers with their dad's credit cards. Yeah, exactly. It's and it's objectively, no matter how much money you like, almost no matter how much money you can have, paying that much money for you know a few skins in a game that you know are going to be replaced in the next season when there's better skins, it's a waste of money when you can think of you know you, you could get three six, basically three sixty dollar full price you know which are three level games at that point, or you could get skins for this two week period. And just the fact that they don't think that there's anything wrong with that and that, you know, there's no reason for us to be upset because, you know, we don't have to buy them or anything like that. It's just kind of, I think it's grading it. And it got to the point where I'm like, you know what, if they're going to call these people that have legitimate concerns a bunch of asshats and they clearly don't seem to respect their player base, then I'm not going to, why bother playing anymore if they're just yeah. going to keep nickel and diming us and tr treating us like crap too. Yeah, and also not to mention... I feel like all of this could have been solved had they not started with the initial point of, hey, you can earn enough in-game currency to buy the next season for free because it seems like they're going to be doing that every season. Had they just been like every season is $10 regardless and then all of the loot in it is free, they they would have made probably more than enough money. Yeah, I would have been fine with and that. And also we wouldn't have been nickeled and dimed. I, I just don't understand why they can't just – their initial model was fine with – you get, you know, uh, when you start out, you get in a pack, you know, per level, and then they slow it down. And then when they come out with a new season or a new, you know, I understand they want money and, you know, th they earn it from cr actually taking the time to yeah. to make skins and things like that. But why not just have, all right, there's three legendaries for each category, whether it's each character skin or gun skin or whatever it is that they come out with every season. Um, and then at that point you can, like I said, you earn the in-game cash or if you want to spend, um, the loot boxes, you can, like I said, you have a chance to get the legendary. And there's but no the option to use the in-game currency on those loot boxes, correct? Correct. And I, that's why I don't just make it so that you can, yeah, yeah, I understand make the price a little bit higher for if you want to use the in-game things. People do it all the time. You know, that you want to work towards it and I understand um, you know, I'm a big proponent on working hard to unlock something. Um, that's what's half the fun of it. You know, if you got, if that was, I guarantee you, if that skin was one of the first things, that's like, oh yeah, free update. Nobody would care. But because it's a quote unquote legendary skin, and you know, those few people that get it can, fl you know, flaunt it and be like, look what I, you know, yeah, have. If you don't yeah. buy it in this two week, tiny two week yeah. period, you get it. You can get it now. Then you actually have to. Just get get it from a random Apex pack, which has what they've said is like a like a one in a five few hundred chance of getting it. So you're it's going to be very difficult to get unless you just buy it yeah. outright right now. Yeah. and just I understand that they want to they want to be like, oh, this is you know hip and now, but that's another thing. Why make it just 
time sensitive make it like a oh it's a cheaper price for two weeks so you know all right it's just if, like artificial scarcity that yeah, they're like oh you got to get it now yeah, or it's, it's gone fake. For good. and and i just Supply i just demand. don't understand yeah. they could have ran with the model of just like i said three new legendary things for each category each month you have percentages you keep going with the packs if you want to buy them and if you don't or if you actually want to buy it for you can buy anything in the game any skin you want for five dollars cash or whatever Fine, yeah, sure. Because they, cause one of the things he said was, you know, sometimes we do discounts and it doesn't change how many people buy it. And it's like, well, you're selling them for eighteen dollars, and then you're, the discounts they have are typically for twelve dollars. You can buy the skin, and it's like no skin is worth twelve dollars. Like no. you, you would have to. No. You should. They should be like on sale for two dollars, and then people would start buying them. Yeah, I, I and, feel like a skin should be like ten cents. Yeah, I mean, dude, honestly. Well, if you think about it, like it, this is where I get scared for video games in the future. Is like if, if they're putting a price, like I know Fallout did it too, where it's like a haircut's five bucks. It's like what is the percentage of that seventy oh, six or. No, no. For well, just in general, like a, a gun, a hair, uh, uh, you know, a hairstyle, whatever it is. What what tiny asset percentage is that one item compared to the rest of the game? Yeah, it's like point like oh oh one percent, like one. Yeah, I gotta be honest. I've seen some of the haircuts in Fallout Four. <laughs> I could easily make one of those. As someone who's done three D modeling, it's not. Yeah, it's and just hair. It's your really legitimate yeah. concerns because like if you look at it, I'm not. I haven't played much of Fortnite, but. From what I hear, that's kind of monetization. The monetization of that is kind of, you know, it's not nickel and diming people. It's you can buy the season pass if you want, and they don't do these things where they cut off the best items in a small amount of time. So no, it's like actually, no one, it's like, thing, like why, when why I played it? the Battle Royale on Fortnite that you actually got items and skins and stuff like that at a pretty regular pace, I felt, you know. Yeah. And I, I thought it was kind of slow, but that's personally, I just, again, it's a free game, so that's maybe it's a different level. We were also used playing to, it pretty sparingly. I would say compared to like other people who play it as like really, yeah, I thought play we, I mean, we're playing like an hour or two a night sometimes. So but, yeah, there's a lot of things. Yeah. In the, there's a lot of things that Respawn could have done, and I, I think this PR disaster probably hurt them a lot. The Respawn CEO did come out within the past couple of days and kind of apologize for all that stuff, but I feel like it was kind of just trying to put a band aid on top yeah. of a you know. I wonder if this I is going to come up with a good metaphor there, like a bullet wound, I guess. <laughs> well, yeah, but I also wonder if this is going to affect the new Star Wars game. If people are going to boycott it. Uh, that's only if they're going to connect Star Wars directly to Apex Legends, which I don't know how much of the general populace also. Star Wars is a well, no, Star Wars just, is a huge brand on its own. No, where, I, like, I don't know how much I understand of the general the Star populace Wars thing. is going to connect it directly to what happened with this. No, but I figured, it, you know, it's respawn. Some, a lot of these gamers, you know, can really hold on to a grudge. Yeah, um, and I mean, not only that, it's EA. So it's like, oh, the grudge well, that, of the that's EA another people. Thing. Like, is it, it's hard to tell, like, the difference between, like, you know, when Apex first came out and it was a smash hit initially, which, yeah, the numbers went down almost immediately after that. But, like, at that point, it was EA had no hand in this. Are we still saying that now? Are we saying, like, oh, this is, you know, EA had no hand in this from the get-go. Is EA putting their hand in now or is it just Respawn? Who knows? Yeah, probably. And it does. I mean, to Dan's point, I, I, I'm probably going to end up playing Star Wars, but I'm a little less enthused about it because I'm like, all right, well, I'm playing this game from people that... I don't know if don't respect me. Don't I feel like they don't respect me. I feel like they don't respect their communities. I don't feel like they don't re, you know respect the amount of time and money yeah. people pay for these games and you know that they have to pay their bills and some of them are you know they're playing this free to play game but they don't have a lot of money and they're really excited to buy buy that new skin that's the one thing they can buy this week and they just yeah. you know on top of that too even if if quote unquote freeloading it's like well guess what that that one player that's spending the money is playing it because there's 10 other people that yeah. are not spending anything but there are the players you're shooting against so guess what you have no you have no players even if they're freeloaders you have th that one kid is going to stop playing it because he has nothing to play for yeah. so th those people build your your player base so even if they don't spend the money so and um you know Matt when this happened, I was kind of unplugged from the situation. Matt was the one who filled me in on it all. And, you know, he pretty much said, like, you know, I'm pretty much done playing at this point. And I'm like, hmm, I mean, if Matt's going to stop playing and I don't really like I, I I'm going to admit it here. I was pretty easily swayed into not playing Apex anymore because I already felt like it was taking up a little bit of too much of my gaming time. I, mean, I don't want to go on too much longer about this because we, you know, we yeah, have talked about it every way. week um, about how much time it's taking up. And then. Matt was switching to something else anyways. And then it was almost like in the same mindset. And Dan, this is your chance to kind of get retribution. Uh, last week, you know, you brought up, you know, I'm playing baseball. You guys can make fun of me if you want. Well, now you now your chance to get retribution because 
in in a span of only like five hours, I went from I like Apex too. Now I don't know about Apex, and this is all based on just Matt. What Matt was feeding me is to like, well, if the only friend I have who plays Apex is not playing it anymore. What am I going to play? And what didn't you know? Not only do I have one coworker talking to me about one year about it, but I have a friend and yeah. roommate talking to me in the other year about it, yeah, about it for happening? weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. I'm going to be getting Wild Classic now. Dun, 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 dun. No. Back to 2005. Look at that. What a good year that 2004? was. 2004? I don't know. It was one of those years. I don't know. Year after the Red Sox won the World Series. Oh, Dan, we're done with baseball. <laughs> <laughs> I figured I would try. Dan, I would try. We're done. You're not even I wearing know. a Boston cap today. I don't even know who that is. Is Sam, that the St. Peter's Yellow Oranges? Sam wow. Pedro? On the nose, Andy. Oranges? No. San there's an S and it's orange. And there's another letter that I can't make out. San Francisco. Hang on. San Francisco. Pitchers. pitchers. Sure. Pitchers. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, San Francisco pitcher of water style, the Giants. Um, but hey, you see the good Giants news. Giants are a New York thing. Well, Andy, potentially, uh, you know, y- y- if you're feeling a void of multiplayer, uh, this weekend is going to be a... Oh, no, 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 no. We're not getting to that Oh, yet. no. Okay. All right. We're holding no, no, on. No, no, no. Matt and I are talking about WoW now. Oh, we're talking about WoW. So yeah. talking about yeah. WoW. I will sit back because I don't All right. So WoW. there was this one time a couple years ago in Maine where Matt... I was only going to stay in Maine for like a couple of days and Matt and just once asked me like, Matt, Andy, why don't you stay one extra day? And I just go, all right. That was kind of <laughs> how this persuasive. went. Matt, Matt went, Andy, are you sure you don't want to do well? And I'm like, yeah, I'll give it a go. Nice. So I bought just one month and I made my character. I already committed. I pay, I paid the $15. I'm in Matt's guild. Wait, no, is it already out? I thought it wasn't Monday. out yet. You Monday. can make your character ahead of time. Oh, that's kind of neat. And I went back to my original, you know, gold mine. I made an undead Warlock. Warlock is a class I've never played, but Undead was like my favorite race to play. I felt like Horde had all the better races. Uh, Horde is also the better faction, but for for real, it is. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. That's. I, I mean, I don't want to get too much into this, but I don't know why Alliance is so much more popular. I was looking at my server, and there's like, you know, there were like a dozen Alliance guilds that were recruiting, and no Horde guilds. And I was like, wh- why is Alliance so popular? You have four human humanoid races. Like you have, you know, humans, elves, which are just like better looking humans and then you have dwarves and gnomes which are just basically short short humans. human stubby or humans a, a short human stocky, and a stocky if you will. Or human. I, I i played uh alliance you well played wow no no horde, when i played World, like, warcraft 3 but i used to uh, love the humans yeah with, paladins with horde, you have you know a tauren and trolls and right. the undead and Do you know what like, it might they're be? all completely different so and dan's brought this up before about they're how when, when he plays a game where there's character customization he likes to embody himself in the character maybe it's a lot to do with that yeah, yeah i guess a lot people, of people see themselves like oh i want to be a paladin evidently I, be a... I see myself as a corpse hmm. wow I'm just the walking yeah. dead I actually hate that show. Yeah, but, it's funny. I wasn't really listening, looking forward to this either. And then one of my friends from high school was like, hey, are we going to play World of Warcraft? And I was like, I, I, I guess. Is, is our people doing that? And I was like, all right, I guess I'm all in now. So yeah. then I, you know. I, and I, I will fully admit it. I'm jump. I'm simply jumping on the bandwagon. I All of my best memories from WoW were in the early days. And it's like, you know what? Yeah, it was I so don't good. have any huge multiplayer thing happening now. Matt's quitting Apex. I suddenly feel this like lament about Apex. I don't want to play it anymore. You know what? Why the hell not? I'll give one month of WoW Classic a try. I'm I'm most likely not going to pay it or play it past that point. But you know who knows? Who knows what'll happen? Also, Matt and I were thinking about after the release doing a special podcast on just our experience Wildcast. with wow classic you know maybe like after the first week or the first couple weeks sure. doing kind of like what i do with the zelda podcast that again i haven't done in a couple weeks <laughs> um doing just like a one one maybe one hit maybe two hit wow classic podcast just talking about our experience with wow and like how we like wow classic what we think of it um you know it already i mean i don't really see much like I was, I made my character, and I'm like, this kind of looks like regular WoW so far. It didn't really look graphically inferior to what WoW is now. I just think WoW hasn't really like really like improved the graphics over time all that much. So I don't know what WoW Classic is going to look like once we're in it. It'll probably look a little rough, but I mean, you're not playing it for the graphics. You're no. playing it for like the experience, the leveling. I mean, you're playing it for the world. I feel like that's you know, there's so many so many incremental upgrades they've made to WoW that it's lost a lot. 
in they those made it, upgrades. They made it Pokemon at one point. They made it too. They with made the it, pets and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, they made it too easy. They made the world feel smaller because it was so much easier to travel with like flight pass and everything. Like it just feels like this big, really interactive world when like you, it, it's a big to do if you're gonna go, you know, two zones over. Yeah, you have to be, you have to kind of like run there the whole way and figure out what you want to do. So it's it's. It's really like the world itself is kind of I always the, liked the main character. The, the cell scene. shaded look. I always thought it looked very kind of clean and again, my favorite word to use for games on this podcast, charming. Yeah. I thought it really worked for it. Um I'm sure this is also where I could kind of I'm not going to because it's too much work, but I could plug in kind of a montage of all the times I've said so far on this podcast alone that I'm not getting wild WoW classic again. <laughs> Here I am, you know, kinda you know, this is your chance, Dan. Make fun yeah. of me. Go ahead. No, no, I'll be the bigger man. <laughs> oh, that's even worse. Yeah, I think a lot of people are... <laughs> Screw you, Dan. <laughs> Get out. You're fired from the cast. All right, goodbye. There's a lot of people <laughs> excited for it, and I, th- I think a lot of people are underestimating how long it takes to get to max level in classic um like i think the average or even low end is 10 hours of game time so it's not something you can do over you know a few weeks if you're just playing casually it's going to take you months and months of time even if you're just playing like if you're playing casually but that works for me that works in my favor because i'm i'm less about getting to max level and less about raiding and more about questing and experiencing the world And some some of my favorite memories were um, get being in a guild and playing um, like playing molten core and doing all these bosses and finally taking over the next boss and then finally fighting Ragnaros who's the yeah. the final boss and finally downing him and oh maybe this time he drops his like you know super rare orb or whatever and don't get me wrong I do want to do like the uh, the the raiding and the bosses too and all that stuff but like you know for me just experiencing the world was you know the best part also my class gets a free mount at level 40 so yeah I'm jealous about of that. That, even but... getting at, getting gold for a mount at level 40 and 60 was very hard yeah but i think that like i'm already enjoying it now because it's really got it, it feels like even more so than you know current retail wow is the community is very tight um so i'm already in a guild me and andy's already in the same guild like we already Yay. have you know, our classes picked and they're kind of you know everyone's talking to each other we're kind of learning oh, about each other post in the discord what my uh race and class are yeah it's fun people are trying to figure out okay this is how we're going to do loot when we get to the raids this is how you know these are the different characters we want to play and you know we have all our professions listed so people can help each other out now so i'm just kind of like really excited about that kind of new community aspect about it you know i know i know i always talk about that ground floor feeling too like it'll be nice to be able to play day one and it'll be interesting you know maybe the servers will be on fire and we'll have to wait for yeah two three hours before we get to log in which can be a bummer maybe not feel the sweat dripping off of Dan's face because he's like, I have literally nothing to add to this conversation. Dan, at did all. you never play WoW? And no, his wife did. Yeah. My wife did. It's just, it's not for me. He it's, doesn't. He doesn't like games where you just kind of like it, stand there and hit things. Wow's well, for, Wow's. For, I feel like WoW transcends MMOs though. It's for everyone. No, it's not for me. I don't like the combat. Do so you know what is for you though, Dan? What is that? A new system. You brought your new system. I did bring my new system. So Dan. Wow. I that did. Was a I, I took. <laughs> no, it was, I'm, it was I'm. Hang on. Hands up in the air. I admit it. That was probably <laughs> the roughest transition I've ever had on this podcast so far. Mark the date. But anyways, Dan, you bought the new Switch. I, I did bring the, whatever uh, the hell the it's called. Switch. It's like some stupid. And it's not even SKU like, number. Yeah, it's not the new Switch. It's like the new it's like version number. two or something. Um, they didn't even like relabel it the new Switch. It's just. It's well, it's better there. because then that might be like new you. Right. And so anyway, for anybody listening in on the table, we have Matt's current switch model, which is the same switch model I Launch have day. that I regret getting because I wanted the after I actually got in hand the the neon red and blue. That's the one I wanted after I got the gray one. But I got the gray one and I'm feeling it. It still feels it's kind of like the the Wii U pad, almost, where like it doesn't look like it feels good, but it feels like good in the hands. Yeah, it feels better than the Wii U pad, think. I would say. Um, well, I never had a Wii U, but just from, from holding yeah, the Wii U yours. Has like, Wii U has like um, a the only, the only issue I really feel. ever had with the way the Switch literally feels was the joystick nubs are a little short, but I know that's just because it, it's going to be hard to kind of pack in a slim handheld gaming system anywhere if the joysticks were like popping out like two or three inches but other than that i never really had an issue with the switch i always felt really good in my hands um i like the you know that the material is fine like it's 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 more or less matted fingerprints appear on the surface a little bit but it's not too bad you know i did notice over time kind of like looking at matt's now matt's has the same problem i do where you can tell where your hands have been touching because there's kind of like these grease smudges on the joy cons um which i don't know if that comes up on the red and blue 
Um, but like, if you just look at them side by side, now I, I have Dan's here side by side. It's really hard to describe exactly what I'm looking at in an audio <laughs> format. Um, you know, they, they look mostly the same. Uh, what made you go with the uh, red and blue this time as opposed to the gray? Just different? Oh, no, I had I <clears throat> I had both uh, sets of controllers. I see. That's what I, the one thing I like about the Switch. So what too, did this one come with, though? So this one just came. It came with the, the red and the blue. So you did, um, you did buy the red and blue this time. But you well, bought the gray the first time with your original. Oh Switch. yes, but I, I I had like I said a second set of controllers, so I bought the gray initially, and then I just bought a used version of the the Joy Cons, the red and the blue. What came with red and blue. this new Switch? The new neon, yeah. Okay. So I literally traded in my. Uh, oh, you you did trade it in. Yeah. I thought you said you were keeping that. I was well, I was going to, but I mean, I, you're. you're you know, at that point, it was you're pulling out money here with the two switch docks in your house. So you know, I didn't know if um, in your porch, I didn't know if you were keeping. You originally no, originally well, you did. Say I you wanted were keeping to both. find another switch and then trade that in. I was trying to see if I could get it at a decent deal. All but right. anyway, the kickstand has a different material now. I notice. So it's but, a little more rough on the back because I noticed that instantly with my hands on my right hand when I touch it. Um. Uh, I just I, felt it, it. It felt tighter uh, when I had well, mine. It felt a little brand loose. New. That's true. Again, I'm going by initial impressions. Um, how I initial felt. impressions. It feels mostly the same, and I think it had to because you know it's not like they were creating a whole new dock for it. Yeah, it's supposed yeah. to be the same thing. It's just they yeah. you know, made some slight if improvements. You feel the it. kickstand side by side. The kickstand over here is like almost the same material as the back of the switch, whereas the new switch, the kickstand is almost like a different material altogether. However, it doesn't look like. It's, they change it's still cheap plasticky it's, and it's not even coming out. I don't want to break it. Uh yeah, it's still like the same. Yeah. It's the same the switch is not redesigned. No. It's mostly just the battery life and the screen brightness you said is screen, the screen brightness. brightness is, yep. Noticeable? Screen brightness better. Yeah. I I've noticed it that it um like I said it's it now that's on a lower setting. Well, hang on. I'm going to um, change it. How's the battery feel? Have you noticed a difference? Yeah, I well, so I left this um once I you know, took it back from New York. I never have plugged it in yet or have docked it. Um, and the battery life, even from like leaving it just in standby mode, barely has gone down. Yeah, it really, um, it, it, I don't feel any difference with the Joy Cons at all. The, the, the only noticeable difference I felt as far as like texture is definitely just the kickstand is a different material. Everything else feels pretty much the same. Um, I mean, you know, the battery life and the uh, screen brightness is definitely like an improvement, but like yeah. I really do hope they make. Oh, absolutely! Like a newer model. If they do a full like point. special edition at that point, I'll just yeah. end up giving that to my wife and yeah. yeah. Un well, I mean, that was my plan. My plan was just like you know, you know, assuming you know I'm still dating her at the time. Like you know, here to my girlfriend have my old She'll switch. Love to hear this podcast. Oh, I know. Um, <laughs> we'll see how we're she gives you a T-shirt. You give I, her a switch. I love yeah, you. Fair. I assume we're going to be dating or married or whatever for years to come. Love you. And my plan was like, oh, I'll give you my Switch because you, you've you been playing. She's been, she has her own profile on mine and she plays all of the same games. Anyways, just keep keep that for your save files and keep that as yours and I'll get the new one that comes out eventually. Um, I, I would have to have my current one probably break or have some sort of catastrophic incident for me to like go out and get a new one altogether. Although I do understand why you did this because GameStop was offering a pretty i would say a pretty tremendous deal what was it 225 dollars 225 and on top of that it was tax free and how much are they selling used switches for i believe it's 279.99 so they're only making 40 dollars off of every resale of the switch but i guess they did also i don't know how much profit they get from a new system i don't know how much i think i, I, I was always under the assumption that GameStop buys them in bulk, and then they get 100% profit. But I don't know what the what the markup or markdown is for when they buy like a bulk amount from Nintendo. Nailed it on the head. Two seventy nine ninety nine. Oh, there you Can't go. Imagine this. Now, one lot. thing I was I was actually talking to the the guy um, at GameStop about it. He he apparently is uh like he's he's a a very high up like if you call manager like he's one of the most like sought after like a district manager or something no he's just or... a manager but he's always he's he's kind of the guy that they send when the you know one district is doing bad and they need it to to come up mm. so he's been bouncing around um and he was telling me about how and he's very uh, in touch with like the district manager and kind of almost like lower end corporate about what their plans are and I guess 
one of the reasons that GameStop, I guess, is trying to get in all these switches is because they're thinking about making a, and what I thought about a few weeks ago when I talked about it, a gaming bar. Well, I mean, that's what they more or less said they wanted to yeah. do. Yeah, so, and switches they would be... concepts for redoing the GameStops, and they yeah. wanted people to come and play more games and try out At more At the place, games. exactly. Yeah. So I guess this would be an ingenious way to get a bunch of switches in the hands like oh hey i want to have a drink and hey let's let's you know well, i don't want to <laughs> i don't think gamestop's going to start serving alcohol but <laughs> no, no no i'm talking about, well i'm talking about like a soda or nice something vanilla coke yeah exactly i mean if they, um, if they do that might break me in but nice glass of milk straight up um but um be great, I, like arcades have been kind of dead for so long it'd be nice to have some sort of hybrid where it's like you can buy your games here but also like there's a couch and a tv you can pay 10 bucks and just play for a couple hours or exactly something. and that's what he said they're trying to make certain stores that way as well as they're going to do retro and this is what i wanted them to do and i'm very excited that it seems like the ceo um is really trying to shift gears and and you know, the change. new CEO. The new CEO is really he, yeah. he got hired and he brought in kind of his own entourage of yeah. people to try and kind of mm-hmm. revamp games. Yeah, and he told he told me that managers got a raise and now they're going to make commission off certain categories and stuff. So now, did he happen to mention to you how many people came in and yes, traded in their switches? I looked at. The, he actually showed me how many they were supposed to hit. I think it was like again, this is just off the top of my head. I think it was like two. Th- th- I don't want to give the wrong number, but it was about... No one's going to call you it, out on it. It was <laughs> about 10 times the amount that they expected. So they, they were looking to hit a number, a and they hit 10 times that amount. So that worries me. Only worries me because I'm wondering how many people also bought the new one. Oh, yeah. No, to people, he told me, like, he had... I was the eighth transaction of that day doing the same exact thing. Trading on my Switch, getting a new okay, one. Okay, so the only reason I worry about that is because, um, you know, I talked about... On my Zelda podcast, I was talking about... Um, a Link Between Zeldas. I was talking about kind of the Wii sales, and, like, Skyward Sword was one of the least selling... Skyward Sword sold less units than Link's crossbow training. And a lot of that had to do with, even though the Wii was like Nintendo's, one of Nintendo's or Nintendo's completely number one best selling system, by the time Skyward Sword came out, so many people had traded in their Wiis that it, it almost made it pointless to come out when it did. So it worries me that if so many people were trading in their Switch, but not also buying the new model. No, 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 no. He said the same exact transaction, which means trading in the yeah. Switch and buying the new See, Switch. That's fine because I, I, you know, I, I, I'm not. I don't consider myself a Nintendo fanboy, but like I love Nintendo's first party games so much that I don't want to start to see them slip on something that has so far been very successful. You no, know? I think I think with Pokemon and like I said, I'm I'm really crossing my fingers for like the the Metroid because um, yeah. I really want to jump into that series. Um, oh, definitely, you know, I'm start with the older ones. I I started with Prime and then went backwards. Start with the older ones, like you have the NES and the SNES Classic. Go back and play those older games. Oh, man, uh, Matt, how, what did you feel warp. when you when you used the new Switch? Did you really notice anything different? I don't aside really from the kickstand. I mean, I don't think there's supposed to be a big difference. It's mostly, I mean, yeah. from what I've heard, it's mostly supposed to be like what we've already said: the battery life, yeah, and maybe the, the brightness, a few things about the spec, just little tiny things. I mean, it's not really supposed to be like a new skew or anything. I think so. a lot of it is you just got it out of the box. Again, I think that could 100% be one hundred percent. This kickstand is a different material. Just feel that kickstand, not feel this. Oh one. yeah, definitely. It it feels that was instant. More, Everything else yeah, is just like, like oh, it's just new. It's out of the yeah. box. Um, it's the same size, and I, I, they had to do that. They couldn't make like, I, they could have changed the, the Joy Cons needed to stay the same just because you need people to be able to switch them onto other switches and everything like that. I, I am hoping that eventually there's going to be a design of the switch that can work with the old docking station, but also be a new model. Yeah, I guess we'll um, see. Yeah, we'll see because that's probably do, yeah. around the time that I'll uh, switch up. But um, <laughs> oh. I didn't even do that on purpose. There you go. <laughs> Moving on. Um, Matt. Andy. In as many minutes as you think it takes, convince us to buy the new Gears Pops mobile game and okay. why it's a good idea. Okay, thanks for this opportunity. I'm really glad that you put this trust in me. <laughs> You're the only person I've heard in my life or on the internet talking about it in the past ever. Yeah, so, so first a few dis- disclaimers. I haven't played this game. Um, it's not out yet. It's out today um, at some oh, point. Oh, it came out today? It comes out on Thursday, August 22nd when this airs. Yes. At some point. Um, we're recording this. Don't thing. let them know that we recorded the day, the day before. before. 
Um, so know. I haven't played it, and it's been it's actually been unusually difficult for like a Gears Microsoft game to find any information about it. And even even for a phone game, like when Command and Conquer Rivals came out, you could find a lot of videos of um, streamers and people that had gotten into the beta playing it before it came out, and they did a lot of videos on it. There really has been very little, like almost to an alarming, concerning amount of lack of information. But um, that being said, um, and also I, I I I would like to say I'm. I'm only I'm half joking about this. I do not love phone games. I have this weird addiction to being really into them and then being disappointed by them. There's been like two or three that haven't disappointed me, but I still like to give them a chance and the benefit of the doubt. I think you're into phone games in the sense that you're always looking for one that's really good. Yes, and I'm always phone let games down, that and are they currently already out. Most of them are garbage, and you admit that they're garbage. Correct. Yes. yes. And okay, but this is why I'm going to give Gears Pop a chance. Um, so it's one of the few games that I've actually enjoyed on the phone is Clash Royale. This is a game you've played a lot of. We used to both play on the same Correct. Uh, clan, I think they yeah, were. Yeah, something like that. Yep, that makes sense. Um, that so this is very similarly looking to that game. It's a 1v1. You have three towers. They have three towers. You're, you're just placing your um, different characters on the screen. You have four, like eight that you can bring into battle with you. And you, they each cost a different amount. They do different things. Like, they'll be tank characters. They'll be kind of, you know, faster glass cannon characters. Is it bottom um, versus top? Correct. Kind of a, yep. So exactly it's like really Clash like Royale. taking it's, Clash Royale. It's basically a reskinning of Clash Royale. That would okay. be my best. But they, they threw some Gears things into it. Like, you can take cut. There's, um, there's like, I don't know, four or five barriers in between you and their base. And you can take cover on these barriers. And then as you get closer to them... Um, it's not like in Clash, or sorry, in Clash, you um, you have to put something on your side of the screen. In this, you can kind of move forward, and the more space you take, the more you can put characters on the screen, and kind of start closer to their base. Um, so, oh, kind of like um, League of Legends, kind of. No, did they do that? No, never mind. That was incorrect. Never mind. Go on. Okay. So on top of that, um, so I'm just kind of excited um, to be on the ground floor to be like, all right, if I'm playing on the first day, then I can actually have. You know, if you play one of these kind of games three years after the fact, like if you started playing Clash Royale right now, you'd be at the beer, you'd be in a, and you'd have fun. You'd be competing with people that your same level, but there would always be people so further than you because they had been playing, you know, every Matt's day. pretty huge on getting in on the ground Every level. day, um, yeah, since the beginning. And I really like that kind of figuring out stuff. Like no one, especially because there's been so little about the game, like you'll be able to learn all the what all the different characters do. Like, oh man, Andy, did you see this? And I did like, not. Yeah. So it'll be like fun stuff like that. We'll be, we'll be able to show each other. Oh, this is cool. So the only thing I remember was during E3, there was like a flash animation of like a cartoony version, like a side scrolling little animation of these. And it's sponsored by Pop, I'm Correct. assuming, yep. in some respect. <clears throat> is it cell shaded or does it look anything like that? Or is it more of like a Clash Royale looking like CG game? Uh, it looks, I would say it looks more like Clash Royale. Like um, they, they were specifically, I actually read a, like a little article on it, but they were specific about not making this game too violent. So it is kind of cartoonish because they didn't want to show you, you know, breaking pops and them like destroying and breaking. Oh, so the pop corporation was more. Correct. Like it's kind of, you know, you know, the way that like nice cars don't want to, the companies don't want their company, the cars to get destroyed when or you crash. Or when the DC characters went into Mortal Kombat. You weren't they wouldn't to do, do the fatality. Yeah, you weren't allowed to do a fatality against the DC characters. Yeah, it's kind of stupid. But the way they get around this is, um, so when you like kill a guy, instead of their heads blowing off or something like that um, with the chainsaw, they'll turn into a like a pin, and those pins are what you get for winning. And the pins you can, you know, if you get ten pins, you can level up your character or however many pins. It's kind of like need. the equivalent of your Pokemon fainted. Correct. It oh yeah, it didn't die. Don't worry, you're not bringing it to a hospital. It's a center. And then and, apparently you faint too. Yeah. And so the, it's a free to play game. The monetization looks like it'll again mirror what Clash Royale has. You have you know four chests that you can accumulate, and there's some little extra things like you can get a win streak chest. Um, and it, I mean, f as far as free to play monetization, Clash Royale is kind of one of the better ones. You can really make a lot of progress without spending any money, so it's not too like gross like some games get. Um, and another thing I'm interested about this game is um, there's actually um, like a co-op horde mode on it. So like me and you could play together against, you know, a boss on this kind of, I don't know if it's hard to say what it is. Is it like a mini campaign or is it just like some sort of I know, You said rush? horde mode and I already hate it. Okay. Um, so there's a horde mode in the Gears games. I'm not familiar with how that works exactly, but I'm kind of excited about like, you know, being able to play cooperatively against, you know, just bots if you don't want to have to deal with, you know, getting destroyed 10 yeah. times in a row. I'm honestly, Matt, on I, I almost want to give you a golf clap. That's way more than I thought you were going to talk about yeah. this game or try to convince us so, to buy it. It's, Are you getting it? Are you probably going to 
Oh, I'm definitely getting it. Day How long one. do you think you're going to play? Because you, you mentioned it's a lot like Clash. I know Clash eventually got to be a bit too much for you. Correct. It, it could be any amount of time. It could be like I play through the weekend and I'm like, oh, this is kind of boring. Or it could be just like something I play for a long time to come. Um, On gonna... a scale of Harry Potter go oh, to Jesus Pokemon Christ. go, where does this where does this land, do you think? Where do you think it'll be? Uh, Let's say Harry Potter Go, which I don't even know what that game's called, yeah, that's, is those are zero very extreme. or one. Put them at po- a three. Pokemon Go is a ten because we've been playing that for years at this point. Or we'll, we'll put Pokemon Go at a, at a nice like kind of eight area and put like the room at ten. Where does this fall as quality looks like or playability? I think it falls around like a – It's, hard, it's again, this is all caveated with I haven't played it yet, so who knows, but – my guess is it'll be somewhere around an eight. I'm actually kind of enthusiastic. Wow. wow. That is well, a lot what, higher than what I, I thought. I think that's what I would put Clash Royale at. Like, outside of Pokemon yeah, Go. Yeah, wise Outside of Pokemon Go, that's probably the game I've played the most and enjoyed the most and thought was kind of the best. Um, outside of, like, the you know, there's some other good games that I've played, but none as much as those two games. Um, uh, and, and if this is basically like a reskinning of that and I can start at the ground floor this time and it's kind of like an interesting mi- max up, mish up, mix and mash of uh, Shears up. and Pops... I think it'll be um, the pop angle is interesting. It definitely has the possibility. The and the you know because it's made by Microsoft, it's not like they're they don't have good talent there. Yeah, um, and I I, I want to well you know just to call out myself. I'm I'm joking when I say that Harry Potter Go is like a one. I only say that because it is really just a reskin of Pokemon with I'm Harry Potter joking. characters. Game, gar- hot it, garbage. It is. Fire. It is. But like I've seen really 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 bad phone games that are like no effort put in where it's obvious the harry potter game had some amount of effort by some developer somewhere put into it but i don't even know like i haven't heard anybody talk about it so i assume it's doing really bad i would guess i mean you know, is it niantic? Love... niantic that makes yeah, the... niantic yeah niantic. They, they just reskin oh yeah go. absolutely it's copy paste yeah so yeah i'm just excited that a new game's coming out that like it's something everyone can play and yeah I'm, I'm also. I might I'm curious about how little I know about it. How like I, I really won't know any how any of the characters act, or like as someone who hasn't even played the Gears game that much, I'm not familiar with the characters e- there from that either. So it'll be yeah. kind of all new to me. I'm kind of like you. I'm always struggling for a new phone game. I know. I know Dan's been pretty much just Hearthstone and nothing else, and a little bit of Pokemon Go here and there for the most part. But um, I did re-download Pocket uh, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, but it's just nothing in compared to the actual Animal Cross game. So I really have a hard time. Um stick into it dan are you getting gears pops has matt convinced you no oh wow not even like a trickle no. I convinced you, Th- that that no. type of tower defense Dang. game is not really That's for me like, on a I, phone i it's it's one of those it's just of, one of those things i know i would just download play once and never play again. it's one of my like guilty pleasures that i have a hard time defending like some of these phone games i get excited about because typically they just end up disappointing me yeah but i'm always hoping so just well, hoping, and that's thing. and that's the hope is keeping you alive. There's nothing wrong with <laughs> it that. Is. Matt. Well, that's why I, I was like, I was excited for Blades for the Skyrim thing. Same here. But then that was brutal. I, well, I kind of wanted to try it on the Switch at some point because I guess it's coming to Switch for yeah. free. Yeah. So I'll try it at that point Looks only like because that just ports all of their phone games to the Switch for. I mean, hey, Fallout cost. Shelter is a fun game for free. Fallout Shelter, I tried to replay and. I it it's not I I can't play it as much as I used to, but I will say for a free game, I played that for a long. It's time. fun. It, it for it it's one. It of, never really felt like it was nickel and diming me too much. No, it never did. And on top of that, they kept giving you missions to do, yeah. and uh, the only thing that stunk is they didn't give you some sort of notification, like when you send some guy out. Yeah. Um. So all my guys can ended up dying, but luckily it's really cheap. You know, what? I'll I, probably download Gears Pops and try it. Yeah, you will. I liked Clash for a while. I'll yeah, try you it. did. I'll give it a try if it's, yeah, free. You it's did. free, right? It's free. You could probably get everyone try it. Matt, we'll you talk could about it next probably week. get fun. him to jump off a bridge with you. It really <laughs> probably. Um, All you have to do is ask me once, Matt. <laughs> but I mean, it's a free game. If your phone can handle it, I would encourage everyone to give it a shot. And then maybe next we week know you can your hear me. phone. Can I was just going to say that seems to look a bit condescending Hey-o! to those people that only have iPhone sixes. I'm not kidding. Actually, I don't know if an iPhone six can handle it. I would think so. I mean, it's iPhone. I don't, I don't think it's a very just throw I, it out. I think if you can play Clash, you can probably <laughs> play this game. So I wouldn't worry. It doesn't seem like it's intense. Tell yeah. us how you really feel about iPhones, Andy. <laughs> So something else happened that I thought happened forever. Uh, Sony bought Insomniac. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that either. This was weird that this was a story. Did... (laughs) I thought that, like, Insomniac, every Insomniac game I can 
think of off the top of my head has been a Sony exclusive. I thought they already they did just... a lot of those. I mean, Ratchet and Clank's are all theirs. Um, in Sa- Spider Man, no, what's what's that other game? Sunset Overdrive, I think. Sunset Overdrive is the big like Xbox what's, one. That what's they the made. one that was kind of like Spider Man that they did? They did two. Oh, of. Infamous. Infamous. <laughs> no, wait, is Infamous? Uh... I thought Infamous was them. I, I always get them mixed up. Maybe it is. Yes, you know what? I think it is. I'm going to check. You check. I'm going to check. You're the fact checker. Anyways, I'm going to check. I thought this was just a studio that Sony already owned. Same here. I didn't realize that. I, I remember I they yeah, had just been working too. closely with them the entire time. I mean, it makes... They didn't... I saw some weird article where they're like, oh, now their company is releasing financial information. So I'm wondering if Insomniac was in like dire straits or something and they... Sony oh, bought I them. I can't or? imagine that because they must. They got so much money from Spider Man. Spider Man, yeah. Infamous. I mean, oh, sorry. Infamous was made by Sucker Punch. Different, different company. Oh, Sucker Punch did. That's uh, weird. I mean, so they've been kind of close to Sony forever. Like ever since you know there were those earlier Ratchet and Clank games, all the way through to oh, Spyro, Ratchet and Clank, Spyro and too, yeah. Spider Man were all Sony exclusives and closely associated with yep. the Sony brand. What about Sunset Overdrive? Was that was on Xbox? So yeah, too, they were. That was an Xbox exclusive. So were, Xbox exclusive. Yeah, so there were a couple yes. games that were kind okay. of cross cross platform that weren't as popular as you know Spider Man and stuff. And yeah. then the big one Xbox had was sunset overdrive which was around the launch of the xbox one which was kind of like is that game any good yeah it's I a lot of fun it was so that's like the it's one, like one of those games that i'd probably think it, was good and then in the end i'd never want to touch it legit again. feels like tony hawk meets borderlands yeah that's one of those it's, one games it's crazy. like that and maybe gears 5 are the one games where i'm like man if i had an xbox i would buy those but mm. i can't i don't have access to them like there's it's been such a weak launch that that that's kind of one of the better looking games especially for a uh, exclusive that they have um but, yeah but it's just like i don't even really have a lot to say yeah i don't even i don't know about I wonder, this it's just surprising to me that sony I, didn't already own them yeah i wonder if um microsoft has like a you know exclusivity to the sunset overdrive franchise like what do you, do you think maybe they could have a second one on the playstation or do you think they could remaster it on the playstation or? no no i i assume that xbox this is just again assuming Xbox owns some sort of exclusivity rights to yeah, that to the IP altogether. IP. Yeah, I would imagine you're probably also, right. Also, I don't know how well it sold to even warrant it coming over to PlayStation or being like made a sequel or whatnot. It would be a nice F you, I Kinda guess. Kind of like if Microsoft bought um, Insomniac, I don't think all of a sudden Microsoft could have like Ratchet and Clank in like the Spider-Man game on xbox you know well True. mass effect one was originally made by microsoft studios and at one point mass effect one came over to the playstation 3 um so at this point they could do that did um, microsoft really yeah did microsoft studios- mass effect one was a as a was a uh xbox exclusive made well, by microsoft studios it wasn't bioware wasn't even involved at all no, Bio- bioware was the developer okay, but microsoft, so microsoft studios, studios published, pu- published sorry Yes, published it. But still. But because, it, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how that works. I mean, Spyro Reignited Trilogy came out on all, all systems. So, yeah, it's it's always weird between publishing and developing how all of that stuff works. I don't expect to see Sunset Overdrive suddenly making its way to the PlayStation Store or onto PS4 at all. Yeah, it's um, like I don't even know what to expect from this because Spider-Man was so good. It's like it's not like they can get better with the resources of Sony, but maybe they could. Maybe there's more they can do. Or maybe they can at least maintain the same. Because, yeah. it, it, you know, that Spider-Man game left it way open, like kind of like a movie left it way open for a sequel. Dan looks like he has something interesting to share. Uh, well, it was kind of uh, Matt mentioned something about how he doesn't like he was disappointed that he potentially can't play like Gears of War five. That's something that he would like. Mm-hmm. I just quickly checked up Gears. That's going to be on PC, too. Is it? Is that yeah. I see your thunder? No, okay. no, no. But uh, I just quickly checked up and it says Gears of War five, which I will be buying for the Xbox one. Uh, will feature three different co-op options. First one campaign co-op three players max team up locally or online with friends. So, at some point, we could possibly do a campaign run-through with all three of us. That'd be cool. So. You know, hard considering me and Andy don't own Xbox Ones. See? But who knows? Maybe Gears Pop will get me so into the Gears lifestyle that I'll have to do it. Maybe. I don't know. That all-digital Xbox One really made me want one. You know, want one of the regular ones. Does that exist anymore? Is that lightning? Well, maybe. 
I think it's supposed to thunder tonight. Either that or someone's no, trying to take pictures of us from the outside. That was how fast the Xbox said was on the bl- on the radar. <laughs> Blip was gone. Yeah, pretty much they, they already gave up on that, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, I've never heard I haven't heard anything since. Like I wonder if you can. Because it was a dumb them. idea. I, mean, I guess you can, but it was a bad thing that happened. All right. So before we move on to our discussion topic for the week, is there anything you guys want to bring to the table? I'm gonna uh, stop asking if every week there's gonna be nothing. <laughs> Technically, Matt is the one who brought. I bring, I, I bring stuff to the table before that. You brought up the, you know, this morning. You're the one who said like, "Hey, Sony bought Insomniac." There's the Gear Pops game and the Apex stuff happened. You technically brought that to the table, so I want to give Thanks, credit Trey. where credit is due. Uh, I was planning on talking about the Apex thing either way, but those other two, the other two things were like completely outside of my zone. You Dan, want, you've done I got, nothing. All to the right. Community. You want me to bring something to the table? N- only if it's real. I should tell us about some more baseball. It oh, is. no. You do have something to bring to the table. I do? Ah, yes. Well, I, all right. So I have two things. Uh, one. Oh, damn it. Now he's going to go on forever. Go on. I'm not going to go on forever, you smart ass. Anyway, well, with both of you being very sad with your uh, multiplayer uh, Apex game there. Not sad. We have WoW. Okay. Are you well, excited for WoW? Uh, uh, it comes out Monday at 6 p.m. What did I do? Um, Eastern. All right, all right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Eastern time. This this so way. So right after work, we'll be able to get right into it. All right. Well, I'm talking Set about server queues. I'm talking about like player be player like matches. Quick thing. Anyway. Okay. Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Matt it, cares not about that at all, but you've got me hooked. Already. I know. See, well, I figured it would hit one of you. So and, and these you can play quick rounds, and then you can go play World of Warcraft with Matt. Anyway, so this weekend. Uh, August 23rd to the 25th, Call of Duty Modern Warfare is offering free um, uh, alpha, I think it's called alpha access, to the gunfight mode, which is 2v2. Um, and it's actually kind of neat, too, because you don't even need PlayStation Plus. It's a PlayStation uh, exclusive as well. Um, That's very interesting. Yeah, so uh, the last few, few Call of Duties have been have given like PlayStation a leg up, like, oh, free maps. Uh, no, Sony pays Activision well, to probably get I'm that saying they've been getting not exclusivity, give, but it, I'm sure. They give them because they pay. The PlayStation, anyway. I'm just, shout out to you. You've already won the console war this generation. It's okay. Yes, yeah, I think they're really trying to. You don't have to. You might as well take a huge leap. You're adding well, insult to injury at this well, point. Well, you can. So but far. anyway, um, so I'm very excited. I've seen and heard nothing but good things about this this game. Um, the multiplayer uh, look like a lot of fun, and I think this would be a I great... heard it looks very graphic. That's the so, one I've heard. Yeah, and so I'm very excited to try it, and like I said, at that point, it's free this weekend, so we should give it a go. Um, the other news, and this can go to both of you, is may I ask why, or if you have seen it this weekend... Okay, okay. okay. Why is Hideo Kojima and everything he does praised by everyone... Because you know, at one you point, bring this up because you brought up that specific. YouTuber. Well, this is this is no way to keep young, picking on Hideo. What did he do to you? Well, first of all, he 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 Hideo? 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 he Well, first of all, he's hideous, very man. he's very full of himself. He's very full of himself. Oh, he's got an ego. He's got a huge ego, and it's irritating because there's not a lot That's of call him Hideo. Th- there's not a lot of video game de- like developers that like every game they have to put their name in the game or they have to. They have to throw their face in the game, and I don't know something about him that just bugs me. Like, th- how about you put, you know, You're somebody like the biggest Metal Gear Solid fan? Yeah, but that, I, I, yeah, but I understand that. But he doesn't have to put his name. Uh, he, Metal Gear Solid Five really pissed me off because he put his name in there in every, and I understand it was a like, oh, you know, well, screw that was, you. That was a jab at Konami of any. I understand that, but it's really annoying All because right, outside of Gears Five, how bad has it been? Outside of of Metal Gear Solid I'm Five, sorry. it's still it's still, outside of. Metal Gear Solid I still don't fires. like the fact that he says uh, a Hideo game. It's like, that's great, but guess what? You have people working really hard on that game, and I understand... He also has a very very deep involvement in all of the games yeah, he makes, I mean, it's not on, He like, does, but I still I, I still don't like the fact that he takes that. I don't know. That's just, just a side thing he does, but I understand also people praise everything he do, that he does, and I, I don't like it. For example, this weekend, or excuse me, not this weekend, this week, he released gameplay of... Um, Death Stranding, more gameplay of Death Stranding, mm. but it was another very boring gameplay trailer of him just walking in an open area. But initially, it, it starts out with Norman Reedus peeing. I did why see like a headline why about is that. this and and Young, Young yeah who again just Who's immediately a, a YouTuber who does he's a big YouTuber videos. but he's like obsessed like oh this is great no this is a stupid mechanic and I feel like. 
a lot of the mechanics that he's adding in this game are mirroring Red Dead Redemption 2. Like, they're just going to be, like, one of them. Yeah, that like, kind of reminded me of, like, his balls get, the horse's balls get you yeah, know, smaller. Yeah, and on top of that, though, and at like, one Jesus point, Christ. yeah, at one point, Norman, Norman Reedus, yeah, I'm that's sorry, a thing. I want to go to this horse testicle topic. What? Yeah, the, or, the horse yeah. balls interact with, like, the weather and stuff. Yeah, and so fall it's. Out. In, no, uh, no, not Red Dead. Oh, in, why Red can't Dead. I name games today? In Red Dead Two, or first of all, I didn't even notice that the horse's balls were present. Well, it's because you're mechanic. a normal person yeah. playing. Second the game. of all, they shrink when you go into colder weather. Correct. They yeah. actually program that in. Yeah. Rockstar, you've lost your way. <laughs> yeah, a go bit. on. Anyway, so with this game, um, they have, like I said, he he. I hope to God that you don't have to, and it's not like a button, like oh, you just pee for the hell of it. This looks like something that you may have to do to to get rid of like your urine because there's like a meter and it fills up and it's like I don't want that's not something I want like to that's not something I want to monitor when I'm playing a Kojima game style yeah and I just that's stupid and then on top of that at, like at one point he he walked off a cliff and Norman Reedus fell like 15 feet or whatever and he landed and, and the baby started crying the the BB baby the the what's it called the breach not breach um what's uh, it called basically I didn't the, know it had a name yet I oh just, it, i've BB. just been calling it the baby i think it's called bridge like baby. bb yeah bridge that's what it's called bridge baby um and the when he started getting up the bridge baby started crying and whining and while he was running around and he actually had to press like a button to, and it went into first person and he took the thing off his chest oh, was it and like he a cradled it oh, and nice. he had to God cradle awful. it and like uh, and say things like oh you'll be okay that's it's it seems neat and everyone was clapping but it's like you know how irritating that is going to be every time you fall off a cliff or somebody shoots you and you have to take yeah, out the baby and really shake like, him take care of a baby simulator. yeah and it's the and whole it's like, game is one giant escort mission and huh. that's what I don't understand and I, I, I thought it was neat that like I want to build a connection to the bridge baby at some point but i don't want this type of thing where you have to you know like i said if you have to feed the damn thing every 20 minutes or whatever yeah that's i gotta going be, to be honest i didn't even like t- taking five seconds in grand theft auto san andreas to have my guy eat a yeah it's to just up his health i'm i'm not gonna want to take five hours to take care of a baby yeah but that's what i'm worried about I play a game was, so i don't have to take care of babies and, in real life and everyone to finds it reality. funny everyone was clapping and and they think it's oh, fantastic it like a live gameplay yeah it was you? a lot and the, the people were going nuts and i was like this is stupid why am i why are people clapping because you can pee in the game and then also you can like maybe I said, they were the same people who saw that fallout 76 um Thing at the, but the but that's no the because E3 conference like they were just all on hot top of that all on young like young yeah was another one who was praising it like oh this is really great and it's like no because you would give the same crap to another g- game but I just feel like it, just because he he ups he's obsessed with Kojima he can't do anything wrong and it's like no offense th- this is not enticing like I am a huge like I love his games but I don't appreciate the fact when he puts out this stupid crap. That it's just like, like, oh, I'm just being different. Like, oh, he can pee or, oh, like I said, you cradle the baby. It's like, no, this is mechanics that, like I said, that that hurts games. It tries to be realistic. It is the same and then reason the other, why I hated Red Dead Redemption. And then the other stupid thing they added is, oh, he's like, oh, there's, there's, a, a, there's a new celebrity in this game. And everyone was super excited. And then it was Jeff Keighley. Who gives a crap? I don't like, even know who that is. He's like the Game Awards announcer. It's like... Great, you're in the game. Which game awards? He's like the game, like the VGA, like game awards announcer. He's like the, like, when it comes to like announcing stuff, Jeff Keighley is supposed to be the face of it. With you saying, who's this? Exactly. It's just. I gotta be honest, if you haven't been on a one shot episode of Law and Order SVU, you're not a celebrity in my eyes. (laughs) That's like the threshold. I'm not a celebrity in your eyes? You are not. Okay. Um, I tried. But anyway, we we, we get it. We get it. It was just frustrating. I think the Kojima thing is overblown. Yeah, I, mean, I haven't this, seen the trailer. Have you seen the trailer? No, I haven't seen this one because I haven't seen a lot of Gamescom. But I feel like this one's this oh, game's definitely it was at Gamescom. Yes, yeah, so which now I didn't the, even know what was going on the, right now. See, that's the twist. Is that the more gameplay I see, I I get worried about the game. But then when I see they had two trailers that they released, two but do uh, we even characters. trust the trailers? Like I don't trust yes. him to tell us what's happening in real life. Like I, don't I trust did until we play it. Like he lied to us in Metal Gear Two. He's he's he likes to lie to us. What do you well, mean in Metal Gear 2? Oh, he, he he deceived you that Solid Snake was going to be the main character for the entirety of the game. And like 20 minutes in, if you know what you're doing, you can end up being riding for like the entire game. I mean, that's kind of 
that's in, kind in of a weird way. That's kind of what he did in Metal Gear Five as well. I mean, you thought you well, were one character the entire game, and yeah, but that was the whole game. That was like spoiler alert. Yeah. So, and um, then you're just a random. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, moving on. But yes. yeah, no, I get. I'll, I'll have to watch the gameplay and choose for myself. But like, well, you know, I know that's gameplay... something that you've brought up a lot is the whole like kind of Hideo's like an untouchable golden. He can't do any wrong. Game universe, but just but... summarizing, the gameplay was boring, but the trailers that he released interesting. So that was what I got, and and I it just kind of confuses me. It's yeah. like, oh, I just I want... agree with Matt though. So, like, you yeah, never well, know really how much of that is going to be. The yeah, game. I can't trust him. I can't trust his trailers, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like, I feel like this is definitely a make or break game for his kind of his legacy almost because he's such a pop. He's probably besides Shigeru Miyamoto, he might be the most you know popular and well known developer. Um, I, was, I thought you were going to go like the most popular Japanese man. Oh no, um, <laughs> that's a bit much. <laughs> yeah, like, you only compared him to Shigeru Miyamoto. He made he made a few <laughs> games, like he made a few other games, like Zone of the Enders and some other stuff. But he's really primarily known for Metal Gear, the Metal Gear series, and how kind of you know ahead of its time yeah. with story. And he does kind of have that how like crazy it, it is in a good way. But if it's just now, we get to learn if that was just him or if that was like his just his one masterpiece of yeah. Metal Gear. And, you know, there's not a lot of, like, superstar developers that you think of. And I know the whole point is, like, you know, it's more than just one person who makes all of these games. But, like, Hideo Kojima is, like, one of the first ones that comes up off the top of my head. Like I, I haven't even played most of his games, and I just kind of know the name. So I know the brand, you this know? Is, I mean, the, basically, the, the the remaining question is, he, you know, is he Fraser Crane or is he Joey from Joey's spinoff? Like, is, ah, is, like that's that's kind of how I view it. Like, we still don't that know. all the kids will get. Yeah. The, the the trivia being that Frasier was a spinoff of Cheers, but successfully ran for also 11 years where, I mean, if you've ever seen Friends, Joey wasn't the strongest character of the bunch, and, well, his sitcom really didn't last, last all that. A few episodes or whatever, yeah. So oh, we don't know. two seasons. I didn't oh, even it? know that was connected. Huh. Frasier and Cheers? No, not Frasier, jo- Joey. And Friends? Yeah, he, yeah. Had a, he had a show. I didn't know that was actually briefly. legit connected. Oh, you thought it was just like I thought it was actor? its own thing. Like oh, him, no, him it was being... the same character. Oh. They took the weakest link in that chain. And... Ooh. Ooh. Um, anyways, moving on from the Frasier reference. It's the Cleveland show. That's, Sorry. That's, you, that's how you know when we've uh, we've uh, really that's the greatest the top reference of the I've made in this television show already. Oh, probably. Um, so discussion topic this week brought to you by Dan. No, Matt. 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 Matt got I'm really call. doing bad this yeah, episode. Bad. I'm Matt. Um, I called Metal Gear, Gears of War. They both have gears. I mean, they the have game. gears. I'll give you that. Um, yeah, anyways. Transition. Uh, so, Matt, you wanted to know from the group what, what our favorite and least favorite video game tropes were, which... It, it's vague. It's it vague. is. It also depends on time period, because there's a lot of things that were at one point tropes but are no longer it kind of depends on what era of gaming you're talking about so i figured we'll all go around the horn which is a baseball term dan thank you once or twice with our let's just all do kind of our favorite tropes i'm gonna go last because again kind of like how i do most times i wrote down a lot of different options just in case one of you yeah i had a harder time with the good ones cause... okay i wrote down three good and one two three four six bad yep Somewhere. So we're kind of on the same. So, all right, let's go around the horn because tropes are normally, I would say, bad because it's something that we see too often. Yep, so yep. let's at least go around once and say one good one. Dan, what's one of your favorite tropes in video games? I I'm, I'm going to give everybody a time limit here just because we are running really long on this episode. So everybody gets only two I, well, minutes. To be, to be to fair, I only case. did one good and one bad. Okay, one I, good. I go ahead. Good. good. So it's, it's kind of silly, but I was looking at it and researching it uh, when you told it at lunch today. And it came up as one of the worst for a lot of people. Who but, told you at lunch today? No, I was blind. Anyway. Is it the water temple? Do you no, like water no, no. temples? No. Ew. Ew. Hang on. Hang on. Whoa, whoa. Hang on. Gross. So, I didn't say I did. Anyway, it's it's a silly thing, but it it was under the worst for a bunch of categories, but it's enemies being near fire like explosive barrels. It's. I love that. I love that too. And it was. That actually was, makes me giddy when I see I that. I know. So it, it, anytime in Breath of the Wild there was a ton of those little barrels, I'm like, oh, good. I can it get was them just fun. Shot. And it, it's just. It, I know it. it's. Silly, but like you get that one shot, and it, when it explodes and gets everyone, you think like, "Oh wow, I really planned that out well." And yeah, um, but it's it's just one of those silly tropes that I, I guess like a lot of people feel like, "Oh, you know, hey, people should be smarter than that." And, and I like, yeah, but like in Zelda, it makes sense. Like the 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 
the um, what are they called? The, the goblins. The goblins kind of walking around. They're kind of silly, and they they don't know what they're doing. I can see it being tropey where games only do it maybe once in the game, and it's very early on, like just to show you that you can shoot a barrel, and then they never really do it again. Yeah. But I I when when it's a game like Breath of the Wild where it happens a lot on the map, I always get really giddy when I like see an area where I know yeah. there's fire. Or I have a fire arrow and I see barrels. I'm like, oh my god, I can get all of these guys in one shot. Well, oh especially if you can, if, especially them. if you can work to like get them over there. If you can get them like to move over to the barrel and then do it, it's like, oh, oh that's awesome. Oh yeah. So, is there any other games that you can think of where that's something that happened? Fear, first encounter, Fear. assault, recon. There was a lot of enemies that if you snuck in the room, um, there'd be you know a barrel behind them, or whatever. And if you got one blast, it would save a lot of ammunition and a lot of fighting. Honestly, um, Breath of the Wild is the only one coming to my mind, to be honest. So, uh, I mean, I, I Doom, Doom's another one that yeah, always had that explosion. I've been playing Divinity with a friend, uh, Sarah, and there's 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 a couple fights where you know there'll be a bunch of guys, and you'll feel like, oh man, we definitely can't take this. But there'll be like a fire, you know, a big fire barrel in front of them, and if you shoot that, like all of them will ex- it'll explode and go on all of them, and they'll all lose half their health, and then the fight will start. But you'll be at such a better advantage than if. Oh, if, uh, uh, if you Bioshock, know. you lead someone towards a spot that has a lot of oil on the floor and you can, you know, it was kind of tropey the first time because it was just to show you you can use the fire plasmid on the oil on the ground. It'll light up and burn everybody. But then there's other spots where you can see like there's a lot of oil on the ground. It's like, oh, if I lead all of these mm. up, up. Uh, I forget what they're called. I forget what the generic enemies in Bioshock. Oh, are I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I was going to call them Reavers. Bunny people. That's from... That's Bunny from um, firefly um but yeah if you lead him onto the oil you can just kind of shoot all of them at once it's really fun or kind of like similar trope anytime there's water and you can do something with electricity and shock them it's kind of the same kind of thing um what about you matt what's one of your favorite tropes that maybe other people don't like um well i wouldn't necessarily say other people don't like this just kind of something i like to see in video games um is how i read this question um, so for me, I was thinking um, like collectibles in games that actually give you a reward and like th- help you through the progression of the game. So a good example would be um, in Resident Evil 4 when you have to shoot those blue medallions that are hanging everywhere. Get a nice gun. Yeah, and you get this sweet gun. So it's like you feel like you're doing this little side mission throughout the whole you know early part of the game, and then you get like kind of a reward to kind of give you a leg up to make the rest of the game better. So it's it's it kind of you know rewards you for doing something a little different. Um, they have this in. Some other examples, like actually in Legend of Dragoon, you can there's a bunch of stardust you can collect, and every ten stardust you collect, you get like a new accessory that's like overpowered. Like I got one that gives you double health, so it's kind of Ooh. nice to be like, oh man, I caught all these things, and now I've got this little leg up. Yeah, um, just like and there's different forms of this, like Resident Evil Three. You know, you can collect all the parts from Nemesis if you kill him, and he drops like parts of a gun, and then you can build the gun together. So it's kind of the same vein where you're collecting yeah. something, and it, I like I like that being able to kind of min max a game and get get ahead in little little extra ways that make you kind of divert from the path. That kind of reminds me. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Oh, well, maybe no, we're gonna say the I, same thing. I, I, I doubt it, but I, I remember in Resident Evil Three that, that was you, not what I was gonna yeah, say. Yeah, you could fight the Nemesis or run away, but it gave you yeah, that's incentive. What I was just saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it was you could. Get the incentive, and if you kill him, you got that Desert Eagle parts. Yeah, you got the parts. So you yeah, and then the eventually, yeah. if you fought him enough and didn't run away, you, you could the build the Desert it. Eagle at the end. So yeah. it was worth it to go that extra mile. Uh, Fallout 4, every time you collect a bobblehead, it increases your stat by one. Yes. Yeah. Well, not only that, just seeing the bobbleheads, and then you could you can actually them all, use them, them. And then using, like, being able to shelf those things and, yeah. like, put them anywhere you want, that is freaking well, awesome. Well, it also had its own display case. You could yes. put them all on. But, um, yeah, no, and there's a lot of games where you collect things just for the hell of it. I do, like, prefer the ones where, like, you could at least gain, like, there is incentive. Yeah, there's an incentive for you to not go just, and search now, and Nowadays, it's just like you get a training. trophy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey. So, hmm. I don't know. Those two are really good. No more. They are all. really good. I bet yours is not as good. I, I bet. I you're thought right. mine was silly. To be honest, I thought you guys were gonna laugh at me. So, <sighs> here's a trope in. I, all right, I'm gonna choose this one out of the three I wrote down. So here's a trope that it, it's a trope in the sense that most games do it, but I feel like we take it for granted. And I kind of realized this recently is auto saving. Oh yeah, that's. I didn't cool. even think of that. Um, That's not Matt, where I thought Matt you were and I go. were having this off podcast discussion um, about how we didn't include me, guys. Skyward's well, I don't live with you, Dan, anymore. Uh, Skyward Sword <laughs> was made in 2011, which I feel like was in the era when you know auto saving was even popular at that time. And yet, you have three save files, and you have to manually save around the world. And I'm like, when's the last time I played a game? 
where I actually had to physically save the game. I know Fallout Fallout 4 and games like that give you the option, but there's still an autosave function. I feel like it is something we take for granted now, but also expect. Oh, absolutely. In a game now. Um, like, unless it's a rehash of an old game like Resident Evil 2 Remake or something like that, which is a completely different story. Um even on the NES and SNES minis, they have the uh, save states for games that were, were maybe save file wasn't even available. But Skyward Sword came out in 2011. I feel like that was probably the latest game, like the newest game I've played mm. that didn't have a auto save ability. And I think it's just something we, you know, take for granted as something that's pretty standard now. Another one was uh, anytime there's a boss battle, boss music comes on. <laughs> like, you know, really? you know, it's, it's a special theme. boss. Oh, yeah. When like a new song comes on or it's epic music, I love that. I love a change up in music to to amplify a moment in a game. I know we talked a lot about music and video games on a previous episode, but boss battle music specifically, like I know Final Fantasy VII, there were times where I would like purposely not press anything on the screen and not attack the boss just so I could hear the boss battle music for longer. That that nice guitar riff comes on, but um, you know, I guess that's a little tropey. Um, but, um, tropes are often met with, uh, negative connotations. Um, so Dan, what's a negative trope in a video game that maybe you'd like to see do away with? Uh, it's stuck between one of two. Uh, just the same. We, um, we can go around. Go so through, like, I'll be quick, mine, but so. we can go around. One of twice. them is water levels. I, I, I oh, every Matt called it. Yeah. So water you're not levels? a water level person. No. They do suck. Um, they do suck. They and are. Every moment. Slow. A lot of moments in some of my favorite games, the water part is one of the worst. The The Super Mario Brother games, the, wa- the water levels give me anxiety attacks, freaking bloopers. Um, and the water, I hate Aww, them. The bloopers are so I cute, I can't though. stand them because I panic and I press that button like crazy. Yeah, and I hate having to deal with like your breath and stuff. Yep. Um, so that, uh, on top of that is uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 when you're trying to, when the whole big shell or whatever oh, is broken yeah, yeah. and you have to Dive take that under. girl and, and it's all timed and you have to make sure to go up each vent to get air. Um, it's just... Sonic, the bubbles, that yep. music. Oh, yeah. That, 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 that. Anyway, um, and then... Um, yeah, the water temple from Zelda is is just frustrating. And... Unpopular opinion, because yeah. I know most people complain about it. I never once had an issue with the water temples in either Twilight Princess or Ocarina of Time. It's just the swimming. I just it it just it, it, I feel everybody like everybody talks about that water temple like it was the death of them. I ne- I never used a player's guide on that game. I never had an issue with the temple. Yeah, well, the, the one temple time I played through, I didn't have much of a problem. But I only played it's, for Ocarina it's, it's, once. It... Really? So maybe maybe twice. Oh, I never had an SC24 growing up, so I played, oh, it, on, like, that's the, true. I played it on the DS or something. Um, well, it's not that I didn't, like, I f- struggled to get through it. It was just, I, I hated, like, oh, I got to put on the boots. Now I got to take off the boots. And then on top of that, you got to, you know, clank around. and Because um, when you use them when you were on not in water, it was just really slow. And it was just a slow level for me. I just, like I said, water levels and me don't mix. What's, and then the other one yeah, is... Yeah, what's, what's um, trope? Is, Get them all out at once. It's, I mean, it's a kind of a, a typical trope, and I know a lot of people... Re- or there was a lady that had some huge issue with it, but it's the the typical damsel in distress. Um, you know, the, the dainty woman that, you know, can't do anything on her own. Like, oh, like, it's just... I feel like just, that that's... I feel like that trope has more or less gone away or calmed down like that was definitely a trope early on in video games live you know it also kind of transcends video games that's like how a lot of movies play out yeah yeah and it's well every now and then you'll see like uh even mass effect had it too like it it seemed like you were the 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 main person and then there was always like the the girl that needed help or something yeah um and it was just it's just oh it's overplayed and um i just want a stronger like character rather than well i I feel like we've been getting that i I feel like that trope more or less has gone away by now i can't remember i i can't think of a lot of newer games that use that as a trope think about spider-man that just came out last year where like mary jane mary jane was an outright playable character and um you know the whole point was you know, I can do this too. Well, yeah. Well, this, we were talking about tropes that yeah. we just hate in general. No, not that, well, not that it's to, around to, anymore. To your credit, but every now to and your, yeah. to your excitement, that trope I think has more. Or less it has, away. but every now and then, when when you see one in a new game, and it's oh, like, except oh, in Mario really? Odyssey. Yeah, but Bowser is still stealing Peach. I that's also just s- one thing that's not going to go away. Well, I also tend to see it in in 
Japanese game, like a, a game that has like a Japanese theme to it seems to have that that trope all the time and i don't know if that's something they'd love to play off of i mean it seems like a lot it's of a different culture who knows that's true so um certain games i see it and it's just kind of like oh this is so like typical yeah but, all right matt your next one all right i have like six i'm just gonna go through them pretty quickly go maybe for 10 it. or 20 seconds make each. it happen um so first when enemies level up with you um so yes. we, we've talked about this recently with skyrim where you don't feel like you're getting powerful that's something that's great about world of warcraft where you can go into those places you've already played before and you can crush those enemies that you had such tr- trouble with earlier yeah, if you're when they assassin's up, creed odyssey when they level up, petting. yeah when they level up with you it defeats the purpose you don't have that like i'm getting stronger feeling okay next one escort missions escort missions i think that's like probably the most popular yeah. one if you asked 100 gamers yeah. it's just such a pain to have to you know keep take care of someone when you're like just trying to play the game and have fun but you got to keep going back and making sure they don't get hit it's just a nightmare so the next one Puzzles with random bo- battles. I hate when you're playing an RPG or some other game and you're doing a puzzle and there's like random battles when you're trying to go through the different rooms to figure out the puzzle. You're looking at me confused, Andy, but you know how that works. I need an example. Uh, like yeah, let's I... say there's a code in a door to a, to a room and you have to figure out where the you know the code is from the other rooms. You got to keep going through the rooms, which is no big deal. Do but you mean if... when the enemies respawn? No, I'm saying like if it's if typically in an RPG where there's just random battles when you walk five feet and there's a fight. Are you talking oh, like Pokemon, like like uh, the, okay. the cave, like the cave in Pokemon? Okay, something you're like just that. trying to I, find the exit you, and you're like, oh my god, I gotta get into another fight. Oh, okay. random that's, that's, random spawning battles correct. when you're trying to do something where it's like, oh, I just want to do this thing. Like you're trying stop. to concentrate on how to solve this puzzle, and if yeah. you get stuck on the puzzle, it's it, it can compound the time it takes yeah. by like twenty times. Um, that's that's why um towards the end of the games, especially in Pokemon, I used to stock up on the repels. Yeah, yeah. Dead okay. Space, I feel like, would be have, have that type of thing where you're trying to like figure out puzzles and you got the friggin' infinite number of those uh, enemies coming at you. Oh yeah. Right, three more, real quick. Uh, so one, another one is a game that punishes you for failure with a harder difficulty level. Oh, I now love this that. happens a lot in side-scrolling shooter games where you get like this really powerful weapon that you're shooting a ton of guys at a time, and then you reach a hard point. Contra. You get killed. <laughs> then you have to start with your ping ping, your starter pistol, basically. And it's like you were having a hard time with your amazing weapon, and now they expect you to beat it with the default weapon to the game. It's I like, never played a lot of those. Oh, types I love of that. Games. It's just so much harder. Dark Souls. How can you love it's that? It's like that. Yeah, yeah they take your see. money away. They take uh, your. Oh yeah, that's true. So uh, Enjoy two it, more. I love that. Um, bosses that you can hurt, but you waste your ammo on because you don't know that you're doing doing no damage to them. So oh. there's sometimes you'll fight a boss Amen. where like the game just. You'll have to fight the boss for you know four minutes, and then he'll just go away. But they don't tell you that, so you just. You know, this happens a lot in, like, Silent Hill games. With I was just going to say, Pyramid Head, yeah. Yeah, so especially with games that have, you know, limited ammo, and you're trying to kill this boss, and you're shooting, wasting all your ammo, and then he just, you know, kind of goes away. away. And you didn't realize this whole time that you probably shouldn't have shot him once because you're just wasting ammo and not doing any damage to him. Um, oh, yeah. Only once, Pyramid the, the, Head, the shame end, on you. The end in uh, Metal Gear, if you didn't get to him, you basically wasted all that ammo just yeah. to get him down, and he gets all his health back. Or let I not remind you guys about Aerith dying with all of your materia on her. Yeah. Yeah, thanks right. for the heads up, Andy. Last one <laughs> is um, anytime there's like a, you're playing a video game and there's a time limit. I hate that time limit level yeah. or the, you know, the base is about to explode and you got to get out. It's just like I can no longer enjoy the game at my own pace. I have to kind of rush there. And I guess, you know, that's because they want you to feel like, oh, this is a big important scene. But I just don't like it when they force you on that because I'm not enjoying it. I'm just like stressed about getting to the end in time. What about Resident Evil 2 Remake? When they had that towards the end. Did you like... See, I actually liked that. I was like, oh, shit. Like when, every, when did they have that? So, did you already beat it, Andy? No. Okay. Well, I I, I don't want to... I mean... Let's not. Let In case anybody okay. else wants to play right. the remake, I'm they haven't played it yet. I'm confident I did not enjoy the oh, okay. thing. All right. I actually... This is Just because did, I know the game came out in the 90s, but technically the remake yeah, you never has know. come out less than a year ago. So, the, the year is our for spoiling things one year mark. Uh, I... You guys actually didn't say any of the ones I wrote down, which is surprising. So I guess I'll have to do what Matt did, kind of a rapid fire. Um, Repeating dialogue. Uh, Fallout 4 is the big one for this. Anytime I go to my settlement, I just want to walk up to someone and buy something. All of them just have to – they force me to listen to them say the same thing that eight eight other of the settlers say. Like, all right, I don't need you to repeat the same dialogue every time. Just let me get in there and quickly buy something. Or the owl from Ocarina of Time. Yeah. You have to hear, if you keep hitting A, you'll accidentally hear a spiel. Would you like over to hear it, it again? <laughs> uh, holding any button to run or to walk at a faster yes. pace. Like, it's I understand the newer games where, like, maybe running faster uses stand up at any game oh, where, like, your normal speed 
is walking when you could just have me at least go at a faster pace automatically instead of having me bash a button over and over again. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto, there's no stamina bar. Just have me run all the time. Yep, yep. Or hold a button if I do want to walk slowly, which will happen less of the time. Red Dead fixed that at least. therapy session. That was really good for me, going through those. Just seeing button over and over again. Yes, going through, hearing yours and going through mine. It's like a therapy session of all these oh, that's awful nice. things that have scarred us. For um, loading screens in general. How have we not gotten <laughs> to the point where those are somehow programmed into the game or gone altogether? Or the fact that some newer games have very long Next-gen. loading screens. Yeah, that's kind of one of the things that killed me about the new Crash game. How like yeah. crazy long those loading screens were. Yeah, they were brutal. Uh, level grinding. Make your game... So I don't have to worry about grinding early on just so I don't have to do it later. I'm playing Final Fantasy VII now, and I'm probably in it for the long haul until the remake comes out. I know it's going to get to the point where I'm level 70, and I have nothing left to do in the game except to go to the final boss. And then I have to go to this one island where the enemies aren't even that leveled up enough for me to gain enough experience fast enough where I'm going to have to spend 10 hours just leveling to 100. I don't really care. I kind of disagree. Uh, well, I like a little thing. bit of grinding. Yeah, I kind of like grinding games because I feel like I've accomplished I I just don't like just spending. Just not when it impedes. Like I said, I like to get a bit ahead of the curve and feel like, no, no, oh, no. man, I'm so much stronger than but it's they the think opposite. I should be. I don't like getting to the end and spending 10 hours in the same area trying to get to the final level. Yeah, so you're saying like the boss has like a difficulty spike or something yeah. at the end. That happened. I really hate that too because yeah. like, I just want to finish this game. Could you not make me yeah. play 10 hours? I don't mind nothing? early on yeah, okay. spending yeah, a little yeah, time that. in an area to get ahead of the curve. I'm talking about the end of the game, end of the game, end of the game because it's just it's boring and dumb. Then this is a controversial one, a controversial trope yeah. that I, I think might surprise you in the audience. Difficulty. That you like or dif- don't Dis- like? Dislike. Difficulty settings. Ooh. That's a newer thing. That's a newer thing games do, and I know I'm the person where, like, I was just going at normal just because... That's what I do. Whatever. Game, every game, almost every game has a difficulty setting. Now, how many games from old had a difficulty setting? That didn't start until maybe, like, the probably the 360 PS3 no, era. Re- uh, the, like the, the Resident kind of Evil games uh, had a... Yeah. What about they NES, had, SNES era, though? Uh, th- Most of them? They had Double I, Dragon 2, one of my favorites. They had, like, A, B, and one of them was, like, you could hurt your teammate. I'm just saying, like, now sometimes there's, like, five or six different difficulties you can choose from. Like, I don't oh, yeah. know. Casual, It's like non- Sekiro. Sekiro is just a hard game. And people complained that that, that didn't have a difficulty level, right? It was just, no. like, the no. one. You can game. make it more difficult later I by say using make items. more games mm-hmm. like that. Oh, I like it too. No, you know, I love it. Don't pander. Don't let them be like, oh, I just want to go on easy and get the, the trophies. <laughs> well, it also, I, I like it because it forces you to, especially, like I said, going back to Sekiro, it forces you to fight this way. Like Assassin's Creed, I felt like I could walk up and just hack, 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 and I would eventually win. So it, with Sekiro, you have to play it a different way. Yeah. So and and it forces you to like if, all right if, this is the way that the developers intended me to fight this thing. Well, that's the thing. And if the hard mode is only changing like the health of the enemies or how often they attack or something, that's not really changing the difficulty, like in a in enough way to make it really worth even putting in the game. Yeah. Like there's like for all right, perfect example, Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild has easier parts and more challenging parts in the game. Sometimes there's really hard enemies. Sometimes there's really easy ones. And then as an option, if you beat the game, there's like the new game plus where they just take the existing game and make it extremely harder if you want that extra challenge. But they didn't really like pander to anyone in the game. It's one of those. I like those types of games where like, you know, the beginning areas are a little easier than, you know, you get either better weapons or you learn better throughout the game and it makes it harder later on. So anyways. That's that's a trope that I I kind of dislike because I don't know I, I felt like it, oh, you dis okay sorry you dislike I the, dislike the difficulty a option. difficult setting yeah. as a I think it doesn't necessarily need to be an option especially when there's too many options well, I don't it, need I don't need eight flavors of difficulty in every game I play well Mass Effect <laughs> even has an addition uh, a mode where it's like you don't even play. Like, you, you legit just watch, like, the game, and they make, like, the choices. You essentially just make the choices. I have enough movies. I was like, what the? Why so, are you waving Anyways, that was a really long episode, so I'm going to cut it off here. I'm sorry we didn't get to really discuss Bye-bye. more about the tropes, but um, we're, we're running at, like, the two-hour mark at this point. So, um, this is... <laughs> <laughs> wow. The uh, Trophy Hunter, The Collector, and The Bargain Bin Gamer, and Pikachu, logging off. Bye.